It's time for Mac Break Weekly. We've got a great panel for you. Alex Lindsay's here with Renee and Andy. We're going to talk about Tim Cook's interview with the Wall Street Journal and parse it in great detail. What does he mean, a new category? We will talk about what an iWatch could do, might do, and how much it should cost. All that and more coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 389, recorded February 11th, 2014. A boy, a pipe, and a dream. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by. Squarespace.com, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code MACBREAK2. Squarespace, a better web awaits. And by LegalZoom. Visit LegalZoom.com to save on your legal needs and gain access to a network of legal plan attorneys for guidance. LegalZoom is not a law firm. But provide self-help services at your specific direction. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code MBW to get $10 off at checkout. And buy 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 270,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash MBW to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers your Apple sphere of influence. How about that? That's a good one. Sphere. Alex Lindsay is here. Speaking of spheres of influence, he influences all. He was doing the This Week in Alex show a little <laughs> earlier. Thank you for filling in for me. Why? Yeah, you know, a little dead time. I got in here late. Uh, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. Thank you for being here. How is it in more? Wait a minute. Your set has changed once again. I'm not in Montreal. I actually found a worse place to go. I'm in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, right no, now. no, 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 no. You decided it wasn't cold enough 50. where you were? No, 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 no. Out of the freezer and into the ice. <laughs> Winnipeg's the place where summer's three weeks long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually the coldest place in the world sometimes during the year. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I had a friend uh, played in a rock band who had a, had a gig in, Man in uh, Winnipeg. I actually asked him, I said, what's the worst place? He says, Winnipeg. <laughs> I won't say the name of the band, very well-known rock band. <laughs> Winnipeg. He said, it was like without hesitation, Winnipeg. <laughs> Winnipeg. Summer or winter, Winnipeg. Andy Anako is here with his robotic dentistry, once again very on much. display. Nice to see you. I, 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 on that list of like, once I become like a psychotic trillionaire, I would love to go to like a place like Winnipeg and simply say that either you love this place or you're really, really stuck here. I will contribute $15,000 per person up to $500,000, up to $100,000 per family. If you want to move, I will, I will underwrite your moving expenses and just see how many people stay in one of these places <laughs> really? where, oh, wow. risk minus 40 today. Well, it's like, you know, there are a lot of places. It's a, it's, it's, a like odd, it's, it's a very odd place to choose to live. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I watched uh, the uh, whale, uh, free the whale movie, uh, the last night. And then, free Willy? No, the other one where the whales that are trapped in Alaska. Oh, with John Krasinski. Yeah, yeah, with John Krasinski. Yeah, I don't know why I was watching that. There was no child with me. I just <laughs> <laughs> Renee you just Dem wanted to feel good again today. <laughs> That's it. I do too. Dem ninety in the chat room says you're now in the cold part of Canada. <laughs> yeah, the colder <laughs> part. of <laughs> They, they would put that on a bumper sticker, but at that temperature, adhesive doesn't work. <laughs> the, the cold part of Canada. Uh, but think of the great groups that have come from Winnipeg, Curtis B. points out, including the Guess Who, Bachman Turner Overdrive, and Neil Young. <laughs> the, and the, and the, I think out of Winnipeg is the key on that phrase. <laughs> the guy who invented plain de-icing lives in Winnipeg. Big not surprise. a surprise. <laughs> I'm like, not this is a real a problem here at all. I've, I've never been there, and I'd love to. Why are you in Winnipeg? I am visiting my good friend uh, Kevin Micheluk from Crackberry.com. Mm. We're doing a you know a bunch of work, and if you're going to work, you might as well be too cold to go outside and not work. Is that his apartment? It's a nice place. Look, it looks nice. yeah, it's his house. He, he yeah. very kindly gave me his podcasting setup to use. Beautiful. Well, you sound good. You look good, and uh, you have stairways. I like stairways on television sets that go somewhere or nowhere. I Why don't like we have that. any here? 
We should. I actually, believe it or not, I, I was in the spec. <laughs> believe it or not. The uh, original spiral staircase from the screensavers oh, right. is up the road a piece. A guy right. has it. I met a guy. He said, you know, I have your staircase. So I said, what? He said, yeah, you know, when they took apart the set, they sold it off and stuff. And I have the stair, I have the spiral stair. I said, I want it. But we never did manage to hook up and get it. Maybe we still will. It'd be great. Then you can be that's walking a, down a, the stairs during, at the at the open of the show. That's part of the show. Right. Well, that's also a great design aesthetic. You put the, in, that, in that plan that I want the set to look like the set of a 1983 action movie with <laughs> unnecessary railings and balconies everywhere <laughs> and a machine that does nothing but turn a huge gear and spit out fire every Brilliant. eight seconds. Brilliant. Like a sitcom, the staircase is nowhere. I think there was sta the reason the staircase works on a television set because it gives you the cue that this is a real space and there's more above and below. Right. Yeah. And that's a good cue to have, in, especially in a place which is basically a box with paint. <laughs> so that's a nice thing to do. Anyway, we are not here to talk about silly things like Winnipeg and staircases. We are here to talk about cabbages and kings. We are here to talk about yeah. apple. And the reason I'm not really in a great big hurry... <laughs> It's because it's pretty much the same story as we had last week. Tim Cook says Apple's working on some really great stuff and some really, brand new products. Really, really great categories. stuff. That's and, and, and there's lots of rumors shock. that those shock. great things are, I think we've all coalesced in that those two great things are Apple TV and, and iWatch. I don't think he even, he. This was, the, this was very much like what he told All Things D six months ago. Uh, <laughs> he told this to the Wall Street Journal and part, you know, these, it's a longer interview in which they talk about how Apple's buying back $14 billion in shares, which means Carl Icahn can stand down. Did you, did you see not many people, uh, uh, push him to the curb? Okay. They did. Yeah. They pushed him to the curb. He says, I give up. He gave up. Well, that's because the ISS, the, the. Uh, investment firm or whatever said that you know they aren't going to back him, and without them, you know, once they announced that, there was absolutely no chance he was going to get. I, in the 1980s, you spelled greed I C A H N. He was the guy, you know, and and he's the uh, rebel investor, right? The uh, guy who comes into a company by he has a he may be one of Apple's biggest shareholders. I think he has more than one percent of Apple stock. Mm -hmm. um, hundreds. He says, "I want as a stockholder, he owns four billion dollars in shares." I want Apple to give some of this cash, this $167 billion in cash it has in the bank, back to its shareholders. Back to him. Back to him, basically. <laughs> you know, this is really what's I'm wrong <laughs> with the stock market. Is Carl Icahn couldn't care less about anything except I bought $4, $4 billion worth of I Apple shares. Value. I want it to be worth $8 billion now. Right. Please. I got that much on me right now. I don't, but I, don't, I, don't, I don't bend down on the street to pick up a million-dollar bill if I find it there in the gutter. <laughs> yeah, it's not about the long-term value of the company. It's about a quick pump and dump, which is sad because it affects so many tech companies so badly. But the interesting, the interesting uh, date to consider in this whole conversation is 2024. Why? At the rate Apple's buying back, they will be private. Do you think they'll? Well, the, the plan is to buy back 60 billion worth of stock, not all the stock. I'm saying if they kept on if doing they kept it, doing if it, they though. kept on doing it at the rate mm -hmm. that they're doing it at, which they could afford to do uh -huh. without, they would actually, if they did it at the rate that they're doing it at now, they would their cash. Uh, position would continue to increase um, if they bought 10% of their stock back a year. Who is ISS? It is, you know, I, I, that's is what that I was his trying investment to find. Company? No, no, it's not his investment company. It's another, another one. one. Um, he wrote, Dear fellow Apple shareholders, while we are disappointed that last night ISS recommended against our proposal, our buyback proposal, we do not altogether disagree with their assessment. Basically... Uh, in their ISS said, on the spectrum of options for allocating capital, the board appears to have been sluggish only in returning excess cash to shareholders. And uh, even though the company hasn't placed one of the largest buybacks in history. It's not one of, it is the largest buyback We in agree history. that this effort seems like bailing with a leaky bucket given the scale of the company's cash reserves. Um. Uh, I think Apple's point of view and Tim Cook's point of view is we want the cash in case. Well, in case they decide they want to buy AT&T or they want to buy Disney or they want to buy something really, really big. You want to have that kind of cash, you know, available. It gives them a lot of freedom. But Carl Icahn says, I see money in that vault and I want some of it. Anyway, he's back down. How old is he? How much longer do we he's have to put up with him? 932, like yeah. Yoda. Right. He's an he's, he's, he's older man. Good-looking fella. 
<laughs> nicely dressed. He doesn't um, appear to be wearing sunscreen, so that's maybe a, <laughs> that's a problem. Positive. I wonder what he, looks, he plans to do with all that vast fortune. Probably not give it away. Just the way give it back to the shareholders. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. He's probably not going to go the way of Bill Gates. Of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yes. He does He does seem like one of those billionaires who likes it when people pay attention to thing, the things that he says. 77. So, yeah. Uh, so 77, when, when, he, yeah. when he makes all these statements, I kind of, I, I wonder how much of this is really motivated by this is his intense belief that this is a, so this is something that Apple should do. And how much of this is just that I get to be wise old investment guy who gets to, oh, well, look, a microphone. Great. I will say something prophetic and interesting. Apple has not made a lot of big purchases. You know, they bought Hither and, you know, little stuff. Oh, but, I think that they, I think it was, I think I read that they, they've never bought any company for more than a billion. Yeah. They're fairly frugal. No. Tim Cook told Wall Street Journal, though, we have looked at big companies. We have no problem spending 10 figures. <laughs> How many is that? <laughs> I have 10 fingers. That would be a billion. A billion? Yeah. Yeah, well, right. We have no problem spending 10 figures. Because it's chump right. change. But what about 11 figures? What about 11? And I'm going to spend it on, on Instagram, I think, was his point. Right. For the right <laughs> fit that's in the best interest of Apple in the long term. No problem. None. Zero. I think I think the, the challenge for Apple would be the mix of cultures. I think buying a company that's that big, uh, I think the biggest problem would be trying to assimilate that many employees. I think is I think almost every time we see those kind of mergers, right. it, it's pretty ugly. It's ugly. And Apple is especially think of AOL, Time Warner. Well, especially when when you have such a HP a specific, Compact. Well, and, and you have a, a very very specific culture at Apple, um, which is very different than most other corporations. Um, I think that that would be a difficult mix if you had too many people in a new company. At the same time, blend. although they buy a lot of companies, can you name the last time that they bought a company that really had its own public identity? They buy a lot uh, of little companies Sean. that are starting up that seems to have a technology Siri. they want. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, or they're, they're, they're certainly on the rise. Right? FileMaker, but that was years ago, but that was yeah. probably the last, uh, you know, big name acquisition. Next was probably their biggest integration, and that went the other way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And even now it's a struggle. I mean, they used to have this uh, enough experienced people that you could do a mentor relationship with new people and really enculturate them quickly. And then they grew so fast, they had to start establishing I, um, Apple University and teach more like a lecture hall because the people who were new to Apple started outnumbering by vast quantities that people established at Apple. And any, that's, that, that's a huge problem right now. And any large scale purchase would only exasperate that problem. Yeah, I love Horace Dediu. He's so funny. He looked at uh, Apple's 10Q and he said, based on... The app sales, uh, iTunes sales and all of that. He said, if you were to just split off iTunes into its own company, it would be 130 on the Fortune 500. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger than Kraft. Yeah. yeah. Bigger than the Gap. It's, uh, it's doing okay. Uh, gross revenues, he, cl he figured out based on all this information of, the, uh, of iTunes, is gross revenue, $7 billion a quarter. A quarter. On a yearly basis, the iTunes Software Services Group had gross revenues of $23.5 billion with a growth of 34% year over year. It's not bad. I'll take it. If you like that kind of thing. Why Eddie Q Money hand worry. over fist. So, but really, uh, it, you know, and I don't, I don't know anything about running big companies, but it, is, it does raise the question. And what do you, what do you, if you have a massive uh, uh, bunch of, I remember when Microsoft first started taking off, they didn't know what to do with all the cash. They bought um, certificates of deposit. They bought CDs. They right. Just, they just like, we got to stuff it into something. What, it's like putting it in your mattress. It's like, what do you do with all that? Pay? Well, and the hard part, what makes it more complicated is most of it's offshore, so it's not as complicated as well, Apple. There's a you know, tax consequence if you repatriate it as well. Which Apple's avoided. Right. So I think 70% of that is offshore, so that means 70% of it is effectively untouchable, I think. Unless you want to pay a well, fairly and high you spend it o tax. overseas. I mean, you can spend right. it on things overseas. Um, but the uh, yeah, that's they could have bought AT and T. <laughs> its market caps two hundred billion. They could, well, they could have bought it. You know, the SEC comes with it, it though, which they don't want. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> I think what's more interesting though, as you as you start to look at the Apple TV issues with with that kind of money, is um, you know Apple looking at going head to head with some of with AT and T and Verizon and so on and so forth in specific markets. Much as Google's done the you I know, wish fiber, they would. but I mean, but Apple's is got it the in their interest to go? I mean, look at Apple. Uh, okay, so here's so I'm trying to put myself in Tim Cook's shoes. Here's the challenge: Apple's got a nice little business. Mm -hmm. Doing okay, it's got a nice little business. But uh, and 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 he, and he even says, I, "We want to adjust for the long-term interest of shareholders, not for the short-term shareholder or the day trader." 
and and what he's really saying is he wanted to plan for the long term. So right. what is the long term? You're not about bringing the stock price back up. It's not what you're about. You're about, but you are about what's the next thing, right? Because you can't just coast off into the sunset. So uh, I don't think that the, I don't think the information companies will get to do what the next big thing is until they start sidestepping the cable companies. So the I mean, last I they, thing you want to do is to get into a business an existing business, right? Well, I think that I think that the you know. So you're saying com become become a, a uh, middleman for content? Well, no, no, a a, a a middleman for your own content. I mean, you know, so so the thing is, is that I just don't think that you can do things that are aggressive and to prove um, and to prove models when you aren't when you're trying to go through companies that are have a traditional model that they want to maintain. So um, you know, I think that I think Apple I, I, in, my, in the same way that Google has done you know, fiber in, in a handful of places to experiment. It puts an enormous, if you look at what's happening in Austin, when Google went to Austin, it put an enormous amount of pressure on AT&T. Yep. It was now reacting. How about this? How about this? Sprint has now backed off acquiring T-Mobile. Regulators were pretty clear that ain't mm -hmm. going to happen. So yesterday Sprint said, we're not going to buy T-Mobile. T-Mobile's only 18.3 uh, three billion. Yeah, but I don't think you want to buy any of the existing Nothing. ones. I think you're just buying, you're buying baggage yeah, at that point. I think that, but I think that, I think that looking at specific markets and building out your own network that supports those mar markets that allows you to prove what's, what's there. What happens is that also when people start to see that it creates uh, consumer agitation. You know, I mean, you know, people get upset that they're not, they don't have that at their, you know, where they are. Mark Gurman wrote a great article on 9 to 5 about, the, uh, about what you can tell what Apple's planning based on the hires Apple has made. And we've talked about this a lot. Uh, it's I been watch. going on. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like a watch. So, so Cook said nothing, but, this is, but every time he says right. it, he's getting massive headlines. Quote, it's the Wall Street Journal a few days ago, there will be new categories. We're not ready to talk about it, but we're working on some really great stuff. Which is could be a paraphrase of what he said to All Things D six months ago, right? right? He said anyone reasonable would consider what Apple's working on as a new category. He says he thinks Apple is still a growth company. That's kind of what investors are worried about. They don't, they don't they want a growth company, but Apple's not really been showing the kind of, or at least its last quarterly report showed a slow in growth that might concern the market. Oh, I think I think a, a revamped Apple TV and an iWatch are two very different markets, and I think that they're at this point. I think they're pretty close to the surface. We're here, we're seeing enough rumors that I don't think that at this point. I think it's more of a when than if. I don't know I whether the, the Apple TV is going to be an actual screen or not, but I do think that they're going to revamp what their the, the the hobby is going to turn into a business. Yeah, that's a that's a definite. But uh, the, 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 I can't help but but ask myself. Uh, when he talks about a new category, is he talking about a new category for Apple or a new category for the industry? I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty sure it's just for Apple, but I wouldn't put it past them to simply create something that they feel is so separate from anything else that's ever been made that they could call this. Well, this is a brand new product that really hasn't hasn't existed before in this form. Um, I do think that one of the interesting. I mean, I think that a lot of the rumors with the Apple TV. Uh, I mean, if they open this up to games and you know lots of development and app and apps on your on your TV, I think that that is it, it may not be an entirely new category, but it totally changes the offering that they're putting on the big screen. Wouldn't it be cool? Yeah, particularly particularly when I think that one of the least uh, appreciated announcements from the last WWDC was I was uh, iOS in the car. Uh, because <laughs> when you think, when you take this uh, at the surface, you're talking about a way to make your phone integrate better with that little dinky little screen that's in the, your center console. But really, what they're talking about is the ability to project an operating system onto a much dumber device, uh, in which the phone is your iPhone is still critical to the to the to the process. Your iPad is still critical to the process, but you can actually put it in a place. Uh, and interact with it in a place where it's not necessarily a handheld device. So I wonder if that really is one of the key things about the Apple TV, not just the idea of having a mirror display or even having an Apple TV display, but the idea of uh, your phone essentially being a host for a much more rich interface, a much more rich experience by virtue of the fact that this Apple TV can simply take uh, all of this iOS uh, infrastructure and simply use that just as a way to project it onto a larger screen. Well, and I have to admit that I've been really thinking about the whole TV tuner issue and being able to actually integrate with the cable companies and possibly even have a DVR or anything else that looks like that. Uh, you know, I, I, I find myself, um, you know, irritated. I'm uh, irritated with uh, the Comcast tuner that we have now. 
and thinking that if Apple TV, that, that's the last little bit, because I always have to go back and forth between the Apple TV and, uh, and you know, the standard cable tuner, being able to get that out of the mix, I think that, you know, it would be, I would never go back. I mean, if I, if I could mix my cable, my cable viewing with my Apple TV, with that's, everything yeah, else. I don't, I'm, yeah. I agree. I mean, as a user, I just don't want to use it. That's what Steve Jobs said in his, in his, you know, the Isaacson biography is that it's terrible. It's crap. Oh, my gosh. It's so it horrible. Every time it's I use Comcast, I'm just like, years. this is amazingly bad. We had TiVo, which was better. We had Replay, which was better. Yeah. Right. But they're but this, not. That's not Google what we TV. Get. But this, but this is the this is the scale of the problem that Apple faces. If they want to do something that ambitious with Apple TV, remember that a lot of what they were able to do with the iPhone version 1.0 was due to the fact they were able to negotiate terms with AT and T that were essentially, if you want this hot new phone, you got to do exactly what we tell you to, and that includes add infrastructure at your end to make right. stuff work. And the only reason why they were able to make that work was because AT and T was really on the ropes, and they were. The, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the iPhone was a lifeline. For them, but if the if the iPhone had not worked out for them, they would probably have been bought out by somebody else long before now. But uh, cable companies are doing extremely well. There's there isn't there is uh, there are very few of them who have the sort of like nationwide coverage that an AT and T would have. And so if app if Apple wanted to do that sort of integration where uh, you would be able to put in something akin to a cable card inside of an Apple TV to make it into a cable tuner. They still has to have to talk to Verizon and talk to Comcast and talk to Cox and these these few providers and say we would very much like it so that people don't have to give pay fifteen dollars a month for your cable box and another twenty dollars a month for this multi room service. We would very much like our ninety nine dollar dollar device to work so well with your system that you don't have to charge them for pretty much anything. And given that all these companies are still doing are so well, they feel as though they can they can punch uh, HBO and Netflix around. They're gonna la the, Apple's gonna get, get laughed out of the room if they offer that sort of a thing. Well, I mean, I think I, I, that's, why, that's why that's why I really don't think that it's. I, I'm, I'd be surprised if it would be anything akin to like a cable box replacement or or, or a tuner that works off of anything yeah, other than over the year broadcast. You don't want to deal with cable. Well, and that's uh, here's an interesting thought from Evil IRC in our chat room. Aereo, of course, facing a Supreme Court challenge if they win. What if Apple buys Aereo? Oh, I think it's a complicated business. That's, I mean, the, it's, that's the that's the company where you essentially rent a dime-sized yeah. antenna in it, a metro area and watch off-the-air TV on your Apple TV. I, uh, do we agree that that's the one thing missing that would make Apple TV a compelling product is a, is live television? Apple certainly can mm, do it. Mm, Not really. I mean, no. for, for, for sports, it would be great. Uh, but how much of live sports, like day to day sports, are are even being? You know, it's uh, funny. I'm watching on, the Olympics on, the on demand because, uh, as much as anything. Well, else, even when so. you think you're watching it live, you're watching it recorded. I mean, I already yeah. knew one when I when I yeah. when I turned the Olympics on. I, I, the I mean, I think that there are you know we do a lot of live streaming, <laughs> and there are three reasons to have live, and that's news, breaking news, sports, and interactivity. Interactivity. And if you don't have one of the, you got to have one of those three, or it's not worth I'm it. I'm going on record to say interactivity is key to all future uh, media. Because no, that's absolutely. what we do, and that's why we do it live. <laughs> well, hey, I want to show you the Chevy ad. I was speaking in the Olympics. I was watching the Olympics, and I saw Siri. You saw Siri? In a yep. Chevy ad. Did you see this ad? How was she This dressed? is why you should not ask Siri to read your text messages. How was last night? You got in kind of late. Oh, it was okay. Siri, do I have any new text messages? You have five messages from five people. From Frank, bro. Last night was epic. This is bro. <laughs> Next, from Tim. You ever find your pants? Hmm? Next, from John. I can't believe you got a tattoo on your... Um, the Chevrolet Equinox with Siri Eyes Free offers enhanced integration through your iPhone. Okay. Is this a compelling <laughs> ad? <laughs> I can't wait to get it's that. A, it's a funny <laughs> ad. I wish I, I wish I knew how much how much different that is from like my old beat up old beater that simply has a Bluetooth button that can yeah. activate Siri. My my text my texts are read to me. I don't think when you when you uh, I'm not sure, but t correct me if I'm wrong. When you integrate Siri into the car, it's not like you have iOS in the car. You just right, simply a, have a pathway to the. A, an easier button for activating it, right? So you don't. So instead of having to reach up to the to the home button to do that, because you have it safely docked, you have it right. And notice, by the way, the guy did what everybody does. He said, "Siri, I right. always do that too. Why? It doesn't. You don't need to address her when you use it. No, but it does feel more. <laughs> well, know. then, well, then it be, well, then it becomes like a Stiller and Mira act. I said, like, what? Well, how should I know who called you the last time? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Siri. Siri. Oh, Siri. It's my phone. What? I'm talking to my phone. That's not your phone. Phones don't have names. You're going to tell me who Siri is right now. 
I mean, that's part of the genius of Sirius that they gave it a very Pixar-like personality, and that took away a lot of the hesitation or discomfort I agree. from a normal person yeah. using the system. Yeah. Although that's a that's a form of skeuomorphism, I think that we can, absolutely it is. But I got to tell you, it the, the thing that every time every time when it first Siri first came out, every every time someone asked me how Siri was, I would I would ask her to open the pod bay doors. Open the pod bay doors, <laughs> yeah. Because the reaction was different every single time, and it was you know it was. So you, you know, by the way, Microsoft is also a, a, Microsoft bought Tell Me. Actually, has a fairly good voice control system, but they are going to add a Siri-like uh, assistant to a Windows Phone 8.1 called Cortana, and that is a character from Halo. Beautiful, quite beautiful, and uh, they're not this this picture doesn't do her justice. Voluptuous character from Halo. Only Microsoft can take a perfectly good idea and make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> they just uh, a couple of days ago invested fifteen million dollars in Foursquare. That'll be the location services. Um, I think you know Microsoft's playing catch up all along here. In fact, we just we just saw a, an interesting story. We'll find out in a couple of days at Mobile World Congress that Nokia, which is now a Microsoft company, will be introducing its first Android it's forked phone. Forked in the Android, and it will be forked because it won't have the uh, uh, Google Play Store, which you really want. It will have its own Nokia. Uh, app store uh, built into it so very i think uh, it's pretty clear that um what microsoft's not going to give up but they're going to make as they always do they're these kind of kludgy little weirdo products i don't, under I don't understand <laughs> you know siri like the that, real threat know. is android is it is it not and in fact much of the siri functionality is in many cases better in android well, no, not yeah. really, because no? they're just they're just so different. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think you can compare Google now to Siri because Siri, it really is exactly what the, I, it would be much more difficult to do that kind of in-car demo on an Android device because remember that Siri is really a micro app platform. It oh, isn't you really know, like a hands-free sort of thing. My Moto so, X knows I'm first of all knows I'm driving. If a text message comes in, a very nice lady says, "You've just received a text message from Lisa. Would you like me to read it to you?" I say yes. I don't have to touch or look at anything it reads me the message yeah. i blush it says would you like to reply and then i say yes and dictate the message and then it reads me back the dictation which you blush again which i blush again and but that's very accurate which is interesting <laughs> so far and then sends it without any interaction except voice that's that's a motorola feature for one oh, i agree and secondly I agree. and secondly siri what, what i love uh, what i love the most about siri is that it's been set up to be smart enough to understand that if it doesn't have enough information, it's not just going to bounce you back. You can you can say, uh, Siri, create a calendar appointment, and it will say, okay, who is the appointment with? Where is it? What time is it? Whereas in terms of stock Android, you do have to make sure that it is in the format that this voice recognition software is expecting. And if you're missing something, unexpected things can happen. What so about, it, so what about Google of Apple now? Is that they, is, they did create a personality that you, you expect well, to have a conversation with to get something done. Yeah. There are also different services. Like Siri is at its heart a sequential inference engine. All it does is ask Ooh. a query and then it remembers what the previous discussion was about and bases the future responses on the ongoing discussion. It does that very well. And it can link into a whole bunch of other services, most of which Apple doesn't exploit yet. But you know, Siri is built into Springboard now. It could theoretically have all sorts of services and apps hooked in. Where Google now pulls in tons of data and then learns a lot of intelligence about you, what your air flights are, where you're yeah. going. And it does that prognostication thing, which is really, really convenient if you're willing to give them the access yeah i keep i keep saying that the signature difference between these two services is that siri is like the personal assistant in the next room who will do what you ask it to do uh google now is more like the more like the the the, the valet uh the valet to the, in, in the terms of the uh upstairs downstairs downton abbey where you basically pick up your coat and there's already your theory of tickets in the left hand pocket and it's already been dusted down and there's already a car waiting for you outside <laughs> because it knows that this is the time that you're supposed to be going out to the theater with lady whatever her name is <laughs> lady asquith i like it that's what i want i think i think i think also google now would be the one to recognize that okay i sense that your wife is in the car so i'm not going to read that <laughs> one <to you. laughs> uh, i see the appointment you're going to your wife is with you we'll just skip this for the your, moment your Photocopy. And they'd be like, be no, really, dictate it to me. Uh, no, I'm not going to. Uh, he also talked a little bit about uh, Google selling Motorola to Lenovo. I wasn't surprised, says Tim Cook. It was a logical transaction. Uh, he pointed out that Motorola was a financial disaster for Google. Um, he also said that Google isn't committed to the phone business. Quote, I think it's really hard to do hardware 
software and services and link all those things together, you know it's hard, Tim. Right. <laughs> You're Apple. God you, damn, you, yes. You know it's hard. That's what makes Apple so special. It's really hard. So I'm not surprised that they're not going to do that. Hmm. Um, we, I had a chance to speak to Ben Thompson uh, earlier in the week, and he had a really interesting take. And his theory was that Motorola has always been for sale, that Google needed to buy it because of the Motorola patent threat. But what was in it for Lenovo is when they manufacture phones in China, there's no IP protection. So it's very easy to have low-cost phones. But in North America, the cost of licensing IPs makes a phone you know, $50, $100 more expensive. But now that they can cross-license Motorola patents, they can reduce the bill of goods and compete on the price. And Google was never interested in doing vertical integration for existing products lines. They want to do that for the future product lines like robots and things like Nest that do home automation. The things that are really, really hard, they want to ha help drive forward by doing the entire widget. Uh, everything else, including phones, they're much happier to be the horizontal layer on top of everybody else's stuff. And that made a lot of sense to me, at least. Yeah. It's, Who is Ben Thompson? He's, he does strategery. He, he was oh, on I love that site. What's interesting about him is he worked on Apple University at Apple, and then he went and worked on Windows 8 at Microsoft. So he has a very broad range of experiences to draw from. Yeah, that's a very good site we've quoted from uh, often. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Google did not, uh, uh, wasn't a big loss selling Motorola. They got a lot of great stuff. Um, and I think they got some concessions out of Samsung as a result of the sale that will, I hope, make a Samsung less crappy. It was a good chess move. <laughs> It was a well, chess move. It felt you know, like that anyway, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in terms of every, the big box of stuff that they got out of it, I mean, I, I, but I, at the same time, I think that there's more depth to this move than anybody's ever going to guess. I mean, the conversations that I was, having, I was having with people I know inside Google who've been friends for years, well before they even became employees at Google, talking to me about some of the work that was being done uh, and without, without violating any antitrust, of course, but... The the, the 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 buzz that they were doing internally to make the Moto X as good as they, as good as it could possibly be. This was it didn't it left me with the impression that this wasn't simply a stock transaction or an IP transaction yeah. or or simply as a way of bullying Samsung. It feels as though for at least a, a very large part of the Google inside the Google campus, this was an opportunity to create something that was a more Apple like Android phone. And to a great extent, they actually succeeded with the Moto X. Mm -hmm. Um. Asked about the possibility of a larger phone, Cook told the Wall Street Journal, quote, what we've said, <laughs> I should do this in the Dr. Evil voice, yeah. what we've said is that until the technology is ready, we don't want to cross that line. That doesn't say we'll never do it. We want to give our customers what's right in all respects. Yeah, they don't like OLED at all. I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> there are many different parameters to measure a display, and we care about all those because we know that that's the window to the software. They looked at OLED and they looked at pentile displays and they were kind of revolted by them. As they should have been, was, I agree. Yeah, yeah, they don't think it was worth doing big phones. It's the same thing as doing LTE. You know, they were very slow in getting there because they wanted low-power radios. Can you not do an IPS LCD in a 5-inch screen? It depends. If your Apple things are harder, it's the same reason Amazon tablets right. have higher technology levels than the Apple ones because right. it's easy to make a small batch of that stuff. It's really hard to make 100 million of those things. Yeah. Uh, and again, Apple's not using OLED. They're not going to use Pentel. They have to be able to make 100 million really high quality you yes. know, LED IPS displays. And that might they're be getting tough. there. Yeah, yeah. And that might be. And the, other, and the other consideration is that they will be, w w whenever they make this move, that will be a that will be the only source of this type of phone for the entire world. Whereas, if Samsung, if if a if an Android device maker uh, or even a Windows tablet device maker decides to say, well, what if we had a new LCD technology that had yellow as a, as a discrete color? If that turned out to be a terrible product or drive out the price or just drain the battery, you still have a million other devices that don't have that bizarre technology. Whereas if Apple screws up the, a, right. a large screen iPhone, every large screen iPhone on sale in the entire world is screwed, screwed up. up. That's not good. Like Galaxy S5, we're starting to see rumors that's going to be announced soon as well. May have, in fact, a... Uh, uh, QHD screen, which would give it more than at a five and a quarter, or is that what it is? Yeah, five and a quarter inch screen would give it more than 500 DPI, which is <laughs> absurd. That's <laughs> oh, it's a I'll, I'll say it. I'll call it absurd. Yeah, I think now at this point, I mean, I think anything past so, 300 so, is probably wasted, right? I mean, yeah, yeah I'd argue so anything past about two, two, if you, if you if you happen to have a hawk who likes to do multi-touch. <laughs> 
the hawk will like, we'll be, be chasing vermin on that screen the, to the cows. But that puts pressure on Apple because, the, you know, for one no, thing, Apple, you don't think so? Because I think people pay attention to numbers. No, as stupid well, as Apple, that is, Apple knows Apple that. Is. That's why they said we have a 64-bit processor. There is a reason for no, it. I mean, in Samsung's defense, it's the same reason why they have a 7-inch tablet at 500 DPI. It's because they want one screen resolution target, uh, and that has to scale down because otherwise the large tablet will look silly. So if you have the 5-inch um, Galaxy S5 at that resolution, and then the, the Note and the Mega and whatever else, going because they do phones at every quarter-inch screen size, um, the ones that start getting towards 6 and 7 inches still look good right. and develop have one resolution to target. Yeah, you know, I had a uh, G2 Flex, that's the curvy LG phone, and it has a 720p screen and six inch phone. It, it yeah. really doesn't look good. Right. You know, it doesn't, you got to have some resolution there. Um, Renee, is, is, that, is that really a problem? Because uh, the Android world doesn't have a problem with all these completely dis, uh, disparate phone hardware from completely disparate makers True. that can choose their own resolutions at, on the fly. True. I don't know if it's a problem, but when I, I got a chance to interview Samsung, um, the, the, the product director for Samsung's mobile division, and that was his reasoning, is that they wanted to be able to present a consistent screen size to developers. And screen they're doing res, not size, conferences. screen res. Screen res, sorry, yeah. yeah. Consistent screen target for developers, and they're doing their own developer conferences, and they're trying to move Samsung in a certain direction, and that that was the official corporate reason for why they were okay. doing it, at least. Yeah. Uh, anything else about the Tim Cook interview? We really parsed the hell out of that thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we got. I think we got all of that. Uh, do you want to mention anything about Sapphire? They uh, they're they're firing up that Sapphire plant in Arizona. I do find it interesting that they're building it in Ar in Arizona rather than. Well, they bought it, so it's always well, already been there. But I'm, I'm surprised that they're building building it in the U.S. rather than China. Ah, uh, well, that is interesting. This was but a company they was in the U.S. Huh? Sorry. Gorilla Glass was already in the U.S. Right, so and they right. acquired this company. This is not a new. This is not a new building for Apple. Right. Um. They uh, they and GT Advance are uh, open a facility in Mesa. Earlier this year, according to Mark Gurman and Nine to Five Mac, we learned that Apple is aggressively pushing to make the facility operational this month, and that it will produce a critical and new subcomponent for future Apple devices. We've speculated on this show that that might be the Sapphire on the fingerprint sensor or the sapphire on the Watch. lens but thanks to new documents and information 9 to 5 mac is uncovered with the help of analyst matt margulis we have a clearer picture of apple's plans here uh we see some parts and uh he says appears apple is planning to build sapphire crystal displays for future iphones not touch fingerprint readers not lenses for cameras. That's a lot of sapphire. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of sapphire. Uh, documents detailing inspection tool components explain their purses, purpose. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really mean much to read this stuff. Um, high quality sapphire. Sapphire is stronger than glass. In fact, it's used on high quality watches, expensive watches, because it doesn't scratch. And... You know, normally in material science, the tr the, tr the trade off is plastic doesn't it shatter; it's softer, but it scratches. Right. If something is brittle enough not to scratch, it's also brittle enough to crack. Right. And uh, so, uh, finding a material that can both resist scratching and well, and I think that I shatter. I think it'd be great to have it for iPhones. I, th I still think it makes more of a sen more more sense for a watch than necessarily for an iPhone screen. But it'd be great to have it on an iPhone screen. Mark's point, I think, was they did the math on the amount they were producing, and it would take an awful lot of watches to use at the same amount of glass. <laughs> They're saying the first, uh, the, the they bought these testing units. The first 518 units, according to Marcus, could build between 103 million and 116 million five-inch displays a year. Five-inch displays. A watch a would be glass. considerably small. A, they're really, they're ramping up to do a lot of something. And it could be just that that's what they're going to use for all their displays. I mean, that could be another... And they've ordered over 100 tons of graphite it's a lot to of graphite. heat the furnace. It's a lot of pencils. <laughs> yeah. uh, boy, I, you know what? That would be a selling point. It, you know, there's a few things that are kind of ignored in the, the uh, you know, the, the, the specs Olympics that because they don't really lend themselves to specs very well. But longer battery life, I guess that lends itself to a spec, but better battery life and, and a better uh, resilience... My, my daughter's gone through six iPhones. I mean, they, they just crack wow. all the time. 
See, I drop mine all the time. Uh, I'm going to curse it right now, but I drop mine all the time, and I don't have. I've never had a crack. Screen. It won't crack. You know, she has a case. It won't crack if it hits anything but the front. But if it hits the front, mm -hmm. and this is true of all smartphones. If it hits the front, you've got a big glass panel. There's, it's mm -hmm. you know very difficult to protect that. Um, I, I got to say that the, ever since the ever since Apple stopped making the the dual side sandwich uh, of the iPhone <laughs> four, that's when I stopped. Breaking phones. Yeah, that was for a some, bad choice. For some reason, that exactly. I, I'm. I, I have no evidence to prove this, but I suspect that one of the reasons for the design change is that I don't think they could have. I don't think Apple could have been blind to the fact they were getting a lot of phones back with back panel cracks, and these are. And even when I was accidentally dropping uh, a, a, an iPhone, a, a later phones, it's like okay, they're they're doing they're doing pretty okay by there. Yeah. Although the, although um, if. if if it really, if, it, it would be difficult for the, uh, how would Apple like actually sell that point though? Or if they say that we have a phone, our phones are now made with a Sapphire front screen uh, and they are, uh, they, they are less, they're, they're less likely to crack than anything else. So are they implicitly encouraging people to say, please don't put your phones in those ugly cases that we absolutely hate? And are they, can they say that without essentially saying there is now an expanded warranty on cracked screens? Well, I think they could do an ad in which they drop phones. <laughs> right. they, but then, but then remember the old Samsonite ad where they had a gorilla handling yeah. the bags? They just have a, give a gorilla the phone, he, he throws it and stuff, and it comes out fine. I think There's you, ways to that's, demonstrate that's, this. That's, 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 I, I bet that that commercial would be the most expensive thing Apple's made in 10 years <laughs> with all the lawyers who have to look at. Yeah. Don't say will drop thing yeah. say if drops don't yeah. say yeah. shatter proof say shatter resistant actually don't say shatter resistant if you could try not to say shatter if you can say it's the most durable phone we've made not ever how about in the last three <laughs> no not three months since, in the last two and a half months since the motorola more rocker than most of the just yeah. say it's like, sapphire sapphire say ooh exactly I, I just i feel like um and maybe it's just me because i have such bad experience you know because of my kids and both my kids have broken their phones many times my kids have too yeah uh, but I think this is something that generally consumers would would uh, would uh, you know. Oh get, no, that, I think that's that's definitely about. one of those things that that I think that um, more so than a 64-bit processor or a faster thing or even a higher DPI screen, better battery life and it, and it doesn't break. That's a pretty yeah. compelling. I think that's what real people want. Technology. No, I think I think that the, the three things that you do is you have it doesn't break, you have better battery life, and you have better and a better low light performance on the camera. Oh, low light. That's good. I think that's camera. that's the so constant. Better camera. It is the yeah. constant let's, let's issue. Also, Let's also highlight that this is a feature that Apple can really make a lot of use of because Apple loves talking about materials. And if they say that this is not just another rinky-dink, blister-packed Android phone, yes. this is a there you go. this is a high-quality phone made out of the best materials that exist. And they're making enough they could put it in the watch, too. Absolutely. And, 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 <laughs> Why not? Well, and I think that if you look at... It's a slam dunk for a watch. I mean, yeah. I'm not... I'm not unfortunately, I'm, I'm, wearing a, I'm wearing a test watch today. What is that? Wait, like, wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't... So let's uh, see that a little longer. Is that a, uh, that's the steel? That's, that's a pebble steel. Pebble steel. Sure. Look at that. That's nice. Yeah. My, it's pretty. My, my, my hand doesn't bend it that way. It still yeah. looks clunky. I mean, I got to say, it doesn't, it doesn't well, make it a I fashion mean, statement. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not talking about this, the, the, this wash today, but it's, I'll have to say that it's at least within the bandwidth of what you would expect a watch to, a man's watch to be. This is absolutely hopeless for, oops. Sorry. <laughs> did, you, did you just start music on your phone? Yeah, because one of, the, one of the coolest things about it is that it does have like a music controller, and so I, I've, as, and by trying to show you how cool it scrolls things, I accidentally oh, that's got neat. through there. Are you so, man enough? And when it gets to the end, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you can actually that looks pretty good. Good Yeah, there you go. And, and so as as it keeps moving, it actually will update and show you. So I've seen a lot of pebbles. I have one too. If Kickstarter guy, I've seen a lot of pebbles among start text journalist friends i saw my first pebble in the wild sighting yesterday really? i nice. was picking up uh, lisa's son michael he was playing had a play date and the 16 year old brother was watching them and, I, and we were leaving and the brother looked at his wrist there and was. then reached and got his phone out and i said you must is that a pebble because I, I i was far enough away but i the fact that he, his phone rang after he looked at his wrist told me he's got a pebble on and he did indeed yeah um well, listen, so listen. that's an interesting this guy's kind of a geek but i mean He's a real person, so that's interesting to me. I think. Well, this is—I mean, this is my this is my first time like wearing a pebble like as a as my daily driver, and I'm really I'm really dicking it a lot because you forget about how many times you reach into your pocket to touch your phone for absolutely yes. nothing that merits taking it out, and that yes. that includes 
that that includes that oh the, uh, the the phone's ringing i want to mute the i want to mute the whatever's playing i just want to touch this button i don't want to have to go out there i don't want to have to even walk across the kitchen to where i left my phone to find out who's calling all that kind of stuff but the but we can talk about that later if you like uh, yeah, no, all, I'm, all, 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 all i wanted to say is that if you if you had my real phone for, for some reason the, the architects hate men of average height who wear watches because doorknobs are exactly yeah. at the height of my wrist. Yeah. And so every watch I own will usually have like a scratch here and here where I just simply grazed it against a doorknob at some point. Uh, so yeah, so that that's that's why people are, are really, really hot about the idea of sapphire uh, front faces on, on watches because oh, yeah. we, we, all, we all know the famous story about uh, in the development of the original iPhone, l very, very, very late in the game, uh, Steve Jobs threw his sample iPhone at these engineers, showing them all the <laughs> horrible scratches on the front and saying, we are not going to let our phone look that crappy after people have it in their pockets for three months. We're having a glass screen on this thing. And that I, I'm sure that that same... Uh, that same mentality is, is is right here because you don't spend all that time trying to develop a legitimately beautiful product only to let users make it look crazy and horrible. So should I see? I've been waiting for the Apple. I want to just. I mean, I figure if I buy I a Pebble now, it's the same same as when I had my trio and I was I, I knew that there was a phone coming. So for like a year, I just was like yeah, I'm just dragging along. Yeah. And so I'm doing the same thing where I'm so just this, dragging along, waiting. For the, I have the old Pebble. Pebble. The it. steel looks good, but I'm just thinking I'm not gonna buy. If I buy the steel, I really we're gonna regret it in three months. I don't know. I mean, it's it's and there, there's so many open questions about how Apple would actually implement this. Would they actually do they actually feel like a that a watch like this makes sense that can actually control a phone directly? And also, would they make it open enough so that it would work? with right, you, you won't be locked Android. into an iphone but yeah. also that if nest wants to do a controller if uh no. if, I mean, if given given who they're who they're owned by right now uh if nest wants to make a controller for the apple watch would they let them do that there's so far i mean they've, they've got no problem with uh, putting that stuff into the ios store but how open will this device be uh and how soon well, because, what I mean, how open on but gen i think one, yeah versus gen two I think the other question, though, is is that how many Apple users really care? I mean, I think a lot of them, if it just fits into their ecosystem, I think that, that 50 to 60, maybe even 70 percent of the Apple users will be like, yeah. awesome. Okay, but, is it, but is that like, I, I, I realize that this is the sort of conversation you have when you know, you're three hours into a pot-filled weekend cabin with all your friends. <laughs> but it's like, is that the proper role for, for Apple? If Apple really wants to aspire to greatness, do they want to create products that are only going to appeal to people who own other Apple products? Or do they want to legitimately realize that there are risks, there are pockets, there are desktops, there are notebook bags that we are not in right now. And we want to reach out to those people as well. It's 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 more impressive for Pebble to simply say that we're creating a platform so that uh, most people who own phones can benefit from this device. No nothing, no BlackBerry, no Windows Phone yet. Maybe they'll fix Windows Phone, but a BlackBerry. I'm sorry, you're not. Oh, but I think that I think if Apple only app. if Apple only attracted people who already own iPads and iPhones and i and and Macs. Um, that and and a lot of them were really excited about it. That would be an incredible growth market for that. That it would be the largest electronic watch ever made. You know, they don't need to. I think that the issue is, at least in the first year or two, they wouldn't need to pay attention to anyone outside of their own user base. Right. Um, and, like, just like the just like the original iPod was Mac only at first, but at some point they had to 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 prove it was a great product and also that they were a company capable of creating a great product. They had to do a Windows version of it. Uh, it because it's, 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 sort of, it's sort of like building, hey, we built a moon rover that works great in Earth gravity with lots and lots of oxygen around it saying that's great for someone who grew, who grew up on Earth and has access to Earth all the time and can control the Earth. Tell me, come back to me when you can build something that can work outside of your own environment and ecosystem. Yeah, and I, but I think that that was also when Windows was so dominant. I think that the issue is a lot of people using these watches are going to be you know they're going to be an iOS dominant, an iOS dominant world. I yeah, think that yeah. Apple may do it eventually, but I think I'm that not, I'm, I think they can release the watch and go two years without paying attention to anybody else and and sell yeah, more I'm, than they can I'm make. Not, I'm not saying it wouldn't be successful. That's why that's why I, I I underscore the need to be in Colorado or Washington State and be very very high to have this sort of philosophical discussion. But it's I Apple is a cap, Apple is a company that's capable of and has achieved true greatness in its own time, and I just would hope that. Uh, as they're creating new markets and new opportunities and new products, they don't feel as though everything they do has to be so tightly wrapped up in their own ecosystem that they're incapable of creating something for people who haven't bought into that ecosystem. That would be a shame, I think. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, a new special channel for the Apple TV and lots more.
Woot. Alex Lindsay is here from the Pixel Court. Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. Andy Anaka from the Chicago Sun Times. Did you see the uh, Super Bowl ad for Squarespace? I loved it. A better web awaits is the uh, tagline. It was all the crap, you know, that you see on the web. And then clear it away and make a beautiful, clean website with Squarespace. Squarespace.com. It's web hosting plus the best web content creation tools to give you the best of both worlds. Um, in fact, I just saw Matt Cutts say that Google is now going to downrate, downrank sites that are that have a lot of ads and clutter on the sites. You want to make a beautiful website, you want to go to Squarespace. The all-in-one platform makes it very fast, very easy to create your own professional website, your blog, your online portfolio. Look at this. They just added uh, the logo creator tool. I'll show you the little movie. They're using um, Google Fonts. And uh, then they've got the Noun Project, uh, 30,000 uh, icons that you can use to design your own kind of simple logo. This, I mean, this is what Squarespace is all about, is making things easier for you to do, to make your site look unique without having to know CSS or JavaScript. Uh, just really great stuff. Very easy to use. 25 templates now. They've added more templates. You start with those basic templates, and you just customize them to your heart's content. I can make this full screen, Chad. Would that be easier? Let's go full screen on this. This is, um, this is a demonstration of the logo design tool here. So you get these, uh, these icons on the left. And like I said, 30,000 starting point. You can then add text, obviously, in any of the Google fonts. And there's, I don't know, three or 400 of those. It's just really, really easy to use and really gorgeous. It, but if you need some help... Live chat and email support 24-7, plus a completely redesigned customer help site for easier access to self-help articles and video workshops. E-commerce is now available for all subscription plan levels, including the ability to accept donations, great for nonprofits, or maybe, you, you know, you're getting married and you want to do a cash wedding registry. You don't need the little envelopes that you slip into the silk bags like in The Godfather. You could just say, that's the modern way. Go to the Squarespace site. School fund drives, things like that. It starts at $8 a month. When you sign up for a year, you get a free domain name. And uh, they've got the great apps, too. The Squarespace blog app, which lets you post, but also moderate comments. The new metric app lets you take a look at page views and other statistics, unique visitors, social media follows. If you look at the code, if you do know coding, look at the back-end code. You'll see how gorgeous it is. We're about to rebuild our website. Really great Guess stuff. Guess what we're going to do it on? Squarespace. Squarespace. Of course. It's our, our current one's on Squarespace, but we did it in the old for, in the older Oh, platform. you got to go to Squarespace 6. So now we're, we're yeah. basically what we're about to do is do, the, do a big upgrade. It's mobile responsive. That means the sites look great on any size screen. That's the way to do it. You start with a free two-week trial. You don't need a credit card. Just build. You can use the logo too and, every, and everything. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, just use our offer code MACBREAK2. We're in February now, so MACBREAK2, and you'll get 10% off and show your support for MACBREAK Weekly. A better web awaits, and it starts with you, your new Squarespace website. I like their regard for aesthetics. Let's go. We'll go to squarespace.com. They really, these guys have a great design sense, and that, and and in effect, you inherit it uh, from them just by using Squarespace, which is great. Oh, this is their blog. Let's go to the uh, the site itself. Squarespace.com. Use our offer code MacBreak2. I love it. I, <laughs> Did you, if you didn't see the ad, it's on there. It's really a great ad. All right, continuing on. I didn't see this. Did you see it? There's a Beatles channel on your Apple TV. <laughs> Beatles channel? Beatles channel. It's, I guess, for a limited time. I think it's a net recognition of the Sullivan anniversary. Yeah, February 7th was the 50th. God. <laughs> you know, it was so funny. I, as someone was talking, I, I was like, why, are, why is everyone talking about the Beatles? And they're yeah. like, it's the 50th anniversary, idiot. <laughs> You know, he, he described, Steve Jobs described the Beatles as the model for Apple's business. He said, my model for business is the Beatles. They were four guys that kept each other's negative tendencies in check. <laughs> they balanced each other, and the total was greater than the sum of parts. Great things in business are never done by one person. They're but done by a team. I don't know about Ringo. You could leave Ringo out. <laughs> Ouch. No, I love Ringo. <laughs> Not cannot Take sing. that former Beatles. <laughs> I, I, I have I have to say that during the Grammys, I had it. I had I, I had this observation. I had to tweet it tweeted out that you have to remember that even on the worst day of Ringo Starr's life, a, a star a star's adult life, he was still one of the Beatles. 
<laughs> if he if he spills coffee all over himself today, slips and breaks his hip on the kitchen floor, and the nobody recognizes him when the ambulance comes in, he's still one of the Beatles. He's still one of the Beatles. Coffee. Always will be. So is Tim Cook Apple's Yoko? No, no. Scott Forstall. No. <laughs> I don't know that we need to go there. <laughs> uh, it's 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 definitely one of those one of those similes that you have to cut off at around 1966 because yeah. there was a point at which all the four of these people hate each other hate each, and they yeah. couldn't they couldn't yeah. even record with each other. Steve had a little bit of a uh, mm. rose colored glasses yeah. view of the Beatles. Apple, uh, remember, Apple didn't get the Beatles on iTunes for a long, long time. It was a big deal when they uh, do. That's because he stole their name. He's yeah, totally Apple Corps. Remember, they uh, they actually had a lawsuit with Apple Corps, and they told Apple Corps, wow, they told Apple Corps that we will never get in the music business. Apple right. computers did. Oops. <laughs> and then they did. <laughs> and it all started up again. Um, anyway, apparently there is there is uh, footage uh, from the Ed Sullivan show of the first appearance available, quote, for a limited time. This is in the new channel. You can listen to the uh, U.S. albums. Um so uh, that's kind of cool. The uh, a new channel on Apple TV celebrating the 50 years anniversary of the Beatles. iTunes Radio comes to Australia too. Hello, Australia, and all the ships at sea. Yay! Apple's uh, iBooks Court Monitor, the ongoing case. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that Apple did not like the court-appointed uh, monitor in the iBooks case. They said he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's never done this before. He's getting a lot of money, and he's really pissing us off. Um, they've been Michael Bromwich, they've been, uh, they went back to court saying no. Uh, there was a little stay there, but according to the Wall Street Journal, on Monday the 2nd, U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, Judge Cote, um, Uh, actually, the Court of Appeals reviewed Judge Cote's decision, and they what they did is they said Bromwich stays in place, but his duties are a little narrower. Um, he's authorized to request interviews and documents for the company only to ensure that Apple has policies in place to prevent future antitrust violations and that senior executives and board members understand them. So I don't know if that really cut him back that much. Well, his, his request to get Johnny Ive on the stand probably won't go anywhere now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Future antitrust violations, Johnny. I don't know. I mean, I, but I, I do think I think that, that that's what they what they really wanted to do is not have him talking to people who don't really have any impact on the iBook situation. I think they felt like he was a little bit of a loose cannon. Yeah. That they had to pay him too much. He didn't have the expertise. He's on a and now expedition. he's subpoenaing members of the uh, uh, board of directors and executives and. Well, who is this guy? And that, I can understand why they would feel that way. And I think they probably realize they're going to have to put up with him. Well, I think they realized that he, but I think they realized he was kind of just doing this chutching. You know, I, I need, you know, I don't get, know. Oh, yeah, he was. Okay. For a thousand bucks. I mean, this is just a. That's what lawyers, that's how it is. It's just not, another job. He didn't work so hard for this cushy assignment to waste it now. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Um, all right. So uh, we kind of talked about the watch. We, did we mentioned Mark Gurman's great article. Um, I think that you can make some decisions or some thinking about what Apple might be doing with the watch based on who they have hired because it really isn't merely um, uh, fitness stuff. There's a lot of health stuff in here. Um, they've been meeting with the FDA. You've got Bud Tribble. You've got Bob Mansfield, two of their superstars on the, on the team. Uh, Kevin Lynch, who they brought in from Adobe. Um, and then in the fitness realm, of course, Jay Blonick, we've mentioned him before from, uh, he's a guy who did the fuel band at Nike, Tim Cook on the board at Nike. So that makes sense. Um, but they've also brought in health folks, um, a guy who was a scientist, uh, at Phillips research named, uh, uh, Roy Rayman. Ooh, I like his name. Uh, well, I think, the, I think the bigger he's picture. He's a sleep expert. <laughs> Well, I think I think the, the the big picture here, of course, is that is that Apple's hired a hundred people th to think about watches, and so obviously what they're trying to do is think about how to make what at least when they come out the door, the best watch they could possibly make. You know, that does as many things as it can well. Um, I mean, they're well, definitely not they're definitely not taking this lightly. This isn't going to be an experiment. Yeah, they're they're throwing a lot of things against the wall, but it does sound like based on what the health book uh, is keeping track of in iOS eight. 
Um, German says, according to sources familiar with iOS, iOS 8's health book, Apple is preparing its device to be able to interpret hydration. That's the mm -hmm. first device I've well, heard of that. The one blood, thing to pressure, remember, though, is blood pressure, glucose, pulse, and heart rate. The one thing to remember about this stuff is that it's uh, Apple doesn't just work on one device. Like Some people are saying, how can they do all this this year? The technology is not ready yet. It's just impossible. It's too late. Does this mean it's delayed? All it means is that Apple, like with every other product, is working on this version, next yeah. year's version, and yeah, then yeah. four years out. And whether we see, you know, if, if a sensor technology is not ready yet, we'll just see it at a later point in time. It's not... Everything they're working on now is part of the product cycle of this device, not necessarily the specific iteration we'll see now. But, but yeah, absolutely, the v version one will have a limited feature set, but every feature will work perfectly, or at least that will be the ideal. But they hired a guy with like white hair and a lab coat. That means to me, <laughs> this actually, this guy is an expert on um, uh, measuring pulse. But I think a lot of this stuff is also you're going to be thinking about what you want five you know three versions down when you make the first one you know because you got to think about the you know a lot of those bits and pieces i definitely don't i definitely agree with um uh with renee and andy that that i don't that you're not gonna read the tea leaves and say oh look no we'll get something simpler i mean we, we got our, the first iphone didn't have any apps first ipad yeah yeah big you know. I'll, I'll put it this way if any company can successfully sell a product that requires you to insert a catheter i think it's gonna be out <laughs> Yow. Ouch. Ow. Oh, well, do you want, do you, Leo, do you want the data or do you not want the data? <laughs> yes or no? It's that simple. How badly do you want the data? <laughs> All right. Just bringing it up. Just mentioning it. No, but I think it's like what we discussed this previously, like Passbook and everything else. You will see the first iteration of the technology that will become a lot more promising as more stuff falls into place. Yeah. Mm. How much do you think they're going to have to charge for this? I've been I've been turning that one over in my mind. How much how much could they how much could they charge for an Apple Watch, to, regardless of what it does, to make it into an attractive accessory to all the other Apple stuff that you have? Well, I think we know that I think we can answer the question: How much could they charge? I don't know if we could say how much they will charge. To, to, Is it aimed at the Panerai Rolex to, card? <laughs> well, it's not fifty thousand. But I would say I say I'd say they can charge somewhere up to five hundred dollars for it. What was that Galaxy so. Gear? Was that three hundred, four hundred? Four hundred. Yeah. yeah. Look how well that did. Yeah. Actually, you know, F and Dunn in our chat room said I have a Martian, I have a, a Pebble, and I have a Galaxy Gear, and I'm the one I wear all the time, Galaxy Gear. How much is that? I think it's four hundred. How much was it? Three or four hundred? I think you're right. Three. We have to wait for the Wall Street Journal leak, and then it'll be exactly half of that. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Um, can they go over 500? I don't think they would, but they could. I mean, Three hundred dollars for the Galaxy Gear. Yeah. Two hundred fifty dollars for the Pebble Steel. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think it'd be three ninety nine, four ninety nine. I think that's the range. Uh, maybe you know now that know. I'm seeing I mean, that those other people... watches are that much, I'm thinking they could go to seven. Oh God, no! That's no? stupid. That's stupid. crazy pants. That's crazy talk. I, 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 I think it depends I, on what I, it is. I myself am thinking. I, I myself am thinking they got to price this at under the iPhone. If they, if for every $25 they charge above the cost of a non contract uh, iPhone right uh, now, that increases the degree of difficulty, I think, by a couple percentage points. I don't, I, I don't, again, I, I, I don't put it past Apple to create a product that is so compelling to command a premium price, but I'm thinking that they should be, they're going to be aware of how much these competing things work, uh, how much these competing things cost. And they have to start thinking about how much can we charge for a device that pretty much nobody has right now. I remember that when the when the iPad first came out, everybody was throwing out, oh, it's going to be $1,000. Oh, it can't be a dime right. less than $700. I think I said $700, $750. I think that one of the reasons why Apple got the price under $500 is that they understood that this was a brand new thing. Right. That they, can't, that they, they, weren't, they, they were not going to be able to tell somebody, well, this is the reason why we charge... A thousand dollars for our notebook is that it's three hundred dollars better than the seven hundred dollar notebook. This is a watch that you have. They're going to have to convince people that they actually want and need. So I, that's why I think that I don't know what the target really is, but again, I'd be really surprised if it's much above the cost of a new iPhone. And I, and I do think there's a psychological barrier at five hundred. I mean, I, I think a four ninety nine watch would that's crazy. Do much better I, I, than a five seven seven hundred is crazy pants. Five hundred dollars. Okay, tell me what it does, <laughs> and you've got to absolutely. All right, well, let's think. This is you got to blow well, me away for five. If it does does what Apple the Pebble TV. Watch does, it can't be more than two or three hundred bucks, right? It's got to be Pebble Watch price. But, but add to the Pebble. Then. So the Pebble Watch does notifications. 
It does. You can play stop music. You can play. Actually, there's a little Flappy Bird game you can play on it. Um, you wouldn't really want to play games on it. Well, it's like Steve Jobs did the iPhone. He said, this is how much an iPod costs. This is how much a phone costs. And right. then he said, we're, this, all together, these things would cost you this. And much. then three months later, he only. said, guess yeah. what? We're dropping the price by several hundred dollars. And they did that with the Apple TV, <laughs> and they did that with the iPad when it went to the mini. So they've got a history of putting things, you know, at what the market will bear and then making a cheaper so let's later. Okay, so it does a Pebble. It does a Fitbit uh, thing. Maybe it adds some unusual stuff like hydration, you know, measuring your hydration. Heart rate heart rate, uh, and perhaps even blood oxygen, that kind of thing. So let's say I, that's I those health features. I, I, and no, wait, wait, one more thing. Let's more. say it's gorgeous. Let's say it really does. I mean, the Pebble Watch and all the others are clunky as hell. Uh, a, a guy might be able to put up with it, as you say, Andy. What if it's really, it's, it's slim, it's beautiful. You're not embarrassed to wear it. In fact, it is a piece of jewelry. Remember, they're, mm -hmm. they've hired a lot of fashion people. But now, but now, you're, talk, now you're getting into even another problem where you've got... Uh, people like you got their 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 best hope is to try to sell to people like me who still wear watches and it was just just five years ago uh, that I bought my first watch that was not made out of plastic or had a Star Wars logo of some kind on it <laughs> and even and even there I thought that okay two hundred dollars is a reasonable amount of money to pay for a watch because under underneath me there are people who stopped wearing watches a long time ago above me there are people who are saying I bought how much is this I, I just paid two thousand dollars for a watch. Because you don't understand, every piece was pulled right from the buttocks of the most rare jeweled insect that that science can find inside the Amazon. These these watch aficionados, for which they are not going to give up their favorite watches for an electronic gadget. And the, remember that the other wearable that we're not putting into this conversation, we're talking about. Okay, here's the four hundred dollar Samsung. Here's the two hundred fifty dollar uh, uh, Pebble. Well, how about the ninety nine dollar Fitbit? That this is that's yeah, one of the know, reasons I why think, the uptake on that has been I, so strong was because it is so affordable. You what, can take a chance on it. What if Apple doesn't uh, try to compete with those and says, "No, we're going to go yeah. after a product for the uh, very well off." Yeah. Two thousand dollar BlackBerry. There you go. Yeah. Why is that two thousand dollars? It's the Porsche design BlackBerry. You have that? Uh, Kevin has that. It's you on his dog. Desk. You it. look at that. H uh, how many of those do they sell? I don't know, but they have a Porsche design store, and they have one in gold if you want to start going up to the tens of thousands. I'm going to guess they sold about three, one to Alicia Keys. But it doesn't, you know. They gave her that one. Yeah. That's part That's of the sign market. But I do think well, that they could go the after. What if, okay, this is, Apple used to be really not a company of the people. I mean, it always was, you know, the computer for the rest of us, but it really was a computer for people who had a lot of money. Well, it's it's a company that's for people who have a lot. Of yeah. <laughs> so what if they just embrace that and say, "Hey, we're we're Porsche, we're well, that's, BMW." That's why I think you'd look Mercedes. at a four ninety nine range. They wouldn't, they wouldn't get away with that. They wouldn't. Why not? Who's going to stop them? Uh, people who have money to spend on things. I think I think even <laughs> I, I think Apple understands that here is how much money we can we we can sell the reason why our budget MacBook is a thousand dollars. But if they try to make a two thousand dollar well. It's the exact same thing as our thousand dollar version, but it is framed in it is framed in in, in pure glimmering green, and it is an exclusive. <laughs> you know and it's for the upper class. Uh, you know what's a deal breaker more for me is what we talked about earlier, which is the openness of it. Uh, you know, all the other competitors except for maybe the Samsung, but the other the other guys are open, and well, I have think, to be though. Well, they do, and I don't think Apple. In it, it's not in Apple's blood to be an open product. I, mean, I just I, I don't I think want it to be an open product. I, think, I don't. Uh, I, See, I th I think that as I keep as I keep talking about this, I'm I, I'm more inclined to think that this you know I'm uh, I'm right-handed, so I, I wear my watch on my left wrist. I'm left to th I'm, I'm inclined to think this is a Apple will make a right wrist product, so that this will you will still wear whatever your favorite watch is on this oh, wrist, but no. there will be another device no. like a like a oh, like a Fitbit no. that that puts in a, that is more like a more like a band than an actual wrist device that allows you to deliver new services and new sensors that can then be appreciated through a device in your pocket. Yeah, I, the only thing I think I so I had a Nike fuel band for quite some time until I broke it. And um and uh I, I guess I feel like I, I when I once I once my Nike fuel band stopped working, I didn't have the need to go get another one. Because uh, I didn't like having a two wrist experience, I think that was the that was the issue. Is I didn't like having both of them, and I, and I did find though that I almost wanted to just use my Nike Fuel Band instead of my watch, um, you know, as a watch. Um, and and that what led me to definitely feel like if if Apple did what the Nike Fuel Band did and had a, um, you know, you know, and, and did a lot of other little bits and pieces, I'd much rather have that than the watch that I have, which is you know in a reasonable price range to switch over, you know. And so, but I think that the um, uh, 
I guess the whole thing about I, the reason I think Apple won't extend is that they just want it to work, especially when they first come out of the gate. I think maybe they look at, at expanding to other markets or other platforms once it's working. But I think the, 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 the way to guarantee that it's really going to work smoothly is to not try to integrate with Android and a bunch of other platforms. Because, I mean, I know that we write, we just started getting back into software development and my, my programmer was asking me what platforms I want to develop on. And I was like, yeah, just a Mac. <laughs> and when we do well, the iOS stuff, we're just going to do iOS because I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about how am I going to work with a whole bunch of permutations. It's just too much trouble. And I don't need to. Yeah, it does create a second level of dependencies in Apple's. Apple really likes being able to move quickly and not have to worry about what other people do with their stuff. Yeah. All right. Our show today brought to you by LegalZoom.com. Not a law firm, but they do let you save on your legal needs. And if you need to, you can access the network of... Uh, Legal plan attorneys in almost every state, pre-negotiated flat rates, very affordable. LegalZoom.com, are you, I don't know, starting a new business? Maybe this is the year that you protect your family with a will or a durable power of attorney, health care uh, directives, that kind of thing. Well, that's a New Year's resolution. You know, it's better than, I'm not going to snack. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to incorporate or form an LLC and I'm going to make a million dollars. Of course, the problem is when you're starting this business, you don't have a million dollars to waste. So $99 can get you an LLC or a Chapter S or C corporation plus the state filing fees. That's what we did when I started Twit. And we're still using those papers, by the way, the LLC papers from way back when. A million entrepreneurs now have started their businesses with LegalZoom.com. Trademark protection as well. Uh, you got to trademark your brand. It's so important. One of the nice things... Uh, it should give you a little peace of mind. 90% of LegalZoom customers recommend LegalZoom to their friends and family. 90%. You could create a will for $69, a living trust. There are no surprise fees, no hassles, no headaches. It's very straightforward, very easy. LegalZoom's step-by-step -step process was created by a team of experts in law and technology. So they've done it nicely. Look at all the different things you could do at LegalZoom. In fact, go to LegalZoom.com right now. Browse around. I know there's some stuff you need to do. You've been putting off. You could do it right now. Uh, LegalZoom's not a law firm, but it can connect you with three third-party attorneys. That's helpful sometimes. Like with the LLC, I was, I was trying to decide what state to incorporate in. And uh, there's, there's benefits to Delaware, which is where we did form the LLC. And there's benefits to California. And it would have been nice. They didn't have it. What did you do? Time. Delaware. But uh, uh, it would have been nice if I could have actually asked a third-party attorney. You can now. That legal plan is great and you, very affordable. You know what makes a good neighbor? What? Good fences. Yep. That's, I mean, the thing That's is, exactly you, right. You know, the, the, it, Don't it, ask it, for trouble. And Be you, proactive. And the, and the thing is, is a lot of times we get stopped. I mean, I come from a family of lawyers. And so we, you get stopped. Even, even I get stopped about wanting, you know, it's going to be expensive and everything else. And, and being able to find something that's going to tie tie some of these materials up is is so important at the beginning yes not not when you're in an in, in conflict yes. you have to do it when you're all friends that's when you want to make the agreement i like it legalzoom.com if you uh, use our offer code mbw you get 10 bucks off at checkout uh, and they'll know that you heard about it on this here show legalzoom.com give it a try today um I don't know if there's a whole lot more to talk about. What else should we talk about? Anybody got anything here? iOS 7.1. It's going to come out in March. It's not going to come out. It is going to. It's not. It is going to come out well, in March. There's no GM yet. and uh, Sorry, there's no There's no um, final seat for developers yet. GM candidate. So, so it means March probably, huh? Yeah. There, but uh, do you think the beta 5, have you heard from your sources, is uh, uh, good enough to uh, get the job done? I haven't seen anyone throwing their phones into the river in the contact <laughs> order, so. I think it is much needed. I don't think they should delay it too much longer. I think they should have put out a 7.0.5 for everybody that fixed a lot of the lingering bugs already. Yeah. It's way too long for a 7.1. Perhaps have been waiting a little too long. Yeah. It's annoying. They got uh, just as just this morning I was uh, reading uh, doing some reading on my iPad and my iPad restarted twice. Oh. And it's like, "Oh, that's bad." Isn't that frustrating? It just, so it's happening it just, to you too. Just, yeah, and I, I don't, I, I don't blame anything larger than again the scale of what they were trying to do with uh, uh, iOS seven. 
But it's like, oh man, I remember when this never ever happened. It was so where the last time that this had, this would have happened would have been so long ago I couldn't even remember it. Yeah. So it's not unreliable, but it's just unfor unfortunately this is this is a, a humanizing <laughs> moment for <laughs> iOS seven that Every I hope don't fix with seven point one. Yeah. Every respring is a punch in your Apple heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's 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 like and we have a title. It's, it's, it's like when you when you when you see your favorite action star when he knows he doesn't have another movie coming out for another four months. So he's like, oh, he doesn't always have those rippling abs and that suntan. That really is only something that he has when it's time for. Okay, he is human after all. Yeah. Okay. When you find out your father didn't know the answer to that one question. You know. Oh. <laughs> or when he when he or when he find out that. This is when you like uh, cooking temperatures for like pork were recently reduced like by the uh, by the USDA like uh, three years ago, and I always used to hate like my mother's pork chops, but now I've, I'm cooking them at like and so I I thought I hated pork and now I'm cooking at the right temperature and like oh my mom didn't know everything about how to cook. Oh. <laughs> now, this is this is moist and tender and delicious and flavorful instead of tough and leathery. Oh oh. <laughs> no. She could she could have made use of this information had she had it, but she didn't have it. But okay. <laughs> Oh, um, let's see. Ang Flappy Birds, we haven't really mentioned it. The latest. <laughs> Is there anything Ongoing new now? The Other than he's not, he's no longer there. I think we need a special logo. Flappy Bird, America I held believe, hostage, I day 14. I mean, we're not talking about Bob Costas' eye infection. <laughs> a na international news story, but fine. If you want to have your click grabby sort of uh, headline about Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird. I tuned into Twit Breaking News and I didn't see it. I was just brokenhearted. So the latest is that Forbes sent a Vietnamese-speaking reporter to Hanoi to speak to Dong Nguyen. I don't need to explain the Flappy Bird flap, do I? Well, we should probably catch everybody up. Would you catch everybody up? I'm, I'm, I've done it so many times now. I'm sick of it. Flappy Bird was uh, was, was was released. Flappy Bird uh, was something you'll tell your grandkids about. Yes, the, the 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 day that Flappy Bird ended. So I get very very difficult game. Evidently, I have not played it, oh, but well, I did uh, download it because it was because I found out that it was going to be gone. Which constrained resources causes in, increased demand. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it picked up. It became very. Um, it, I think that there was a reporter or a YouTube channel. I think that really um, talked about it and pushed it into a well into a. Into <clears throat> there is some speculation that what pushed it, it came out in May. You know, right. That what pushed it into the top of the... I'm sorry, hold on a second. Oh, what pushed it... <laughs> what pushed it in... You know, all you have to do is say Flappy Bird. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do what pushed it in the top was that somebody bought, perhaps, some reviews. Uh, because all of a sudden, uh, reviews started appearing for Flappy Bird in December. Uh, and the review speed ramped up quite quickly and then tapered off. And then ramped up again because people started using it. If you look at the early reviews, there is very certain similarity to them. Huh. That is a little bit of a giveaway. So, and also Dong Nguyen, the developer, has three apps, all three of which started getting reviews in December. Mm. Only one of which caught on. The rest just faded away again. And Flappy Bird obviously had the wings right. to uh, make it as a real <laughs> viral success. So it did go viral thanks to this strategy. Um, nobody suspects that those downloads aren't real because all you have to do is look around you. Right. <laughs> Everybody's playing this stupid game. Um, by the way, Paul Therat has the highest high score of anybody in the uh, Twit family. What's his high score? You want to guess what Paul Therat's high score is? Just, uh, you know. 17. No. Paul has 131 points. But there are others of us... <laughs> I have five. I just I just don't know what the selling point of this game is because everybody who recommends it or talks about it talks about this is the stupidest, most frustrating, <laughs> awful trolling game I've ever played in my entire life. But you can't thing. stop playing it. That's why. Rage of so, World I, so why would I want to download it then? I yeah, they have to, a, you know they have I a want game. To have fun when I play games. They have a game like that in real life. It's called golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like golf. Yeah, isn't it, it's it's just called? like yeah. yeah, you fail most of the time. Yeah. you're mostly frustrated and. Um, and every once in a while, you just get a tinge that you might not be a complete failure, and then you decide you have to play it over and over and over. But, it, but at least you're at least you're outside. You might you might even see it's a tan. You argue to yourself yeah. that you're getting a tan and some exercise, except that you're it's driving good, around in a cart. A good walk ruined. And 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 sometimes a, a girl comes up in another cart and sells you beer. 
Okay, I don't, I don't see where this is a this is a valid comparison. Well, you know, my 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 uh, my family's uh, golf course has a cannon. What? A beer cannon? No, it's just a regular beer cannon. Beer. Does it uh, carbide? <laughs> what? Yes, carbide? Yeah, it's carbide cannon. It's big cannon. No, no, it's a full. Is no, it's not okay, carbide cannon. It's a big follow, cannon. It is a big cannon. We just don't put is, cannonballs in it. Is it a mini golf course? <laughs> it's a, I mean, you can hear it for miles when they set it up. When they do, when why, they do the shotgun. Why, start. What are you? Are you getting you know, invaded so, no, by it's the? When you do a shotgun start. So what happens is, is that when you have a tournament, you oh. put everybody on. You put well, everybody on all the different holes, so sure. that they, you know, you're not starting one at a time. But yeah. it's, it's called a shotgun start, and so, so then they, you, you need know, something that everybody on all 18 holes can hear. Man, you can hear Is that. Is it nine? Nine holes. It's oh, 18. It's 18. No, it's a big. It's a big. It's a really yeah, nice you, golf course. You have a family 18 hole golf course. We had a farm that wasn't making any money, so the best thing to do with a farm that doesn't make any money, if you don't have Marcella <laughs> Shale, is is uh, make a golf course do, out of it. Do you charge people for uh, use? I mean, can like people strangers it's a public use golf it? course? It's a public golf course. It's considered one of the, so it's a the best in Western Pennsylvania. So it's a business. We have Pittsburgh Steelers come by and play. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Do you use the cannon on the Pittsburgh Steelers? Only if they're there for a shotgun start. <laughs> then they play bagpipes too. You know, now my, you know why my they're all lawyers it. in his family. <laughs> <laughs> my brother runs it. It is the it is the craziest golf course ever because you just you just got to go to birdsfoot.com just to just to just to. You sign up for the for the uh, for the newsletter just so you can get my brother's um, uh, emails. Like the emails he sends out are the funniest emails that any company sends. There it is. See it's the bird's foot course. story. Wow! Is there a picture of the cannon on the? Uh, oh, do they have the do, wait? Do they have the 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 commercial? So my brother Joe, this is how. Is this it? The really bird's foot story? Is this a, the commercial? Uh, it click, might be. Click to view. Oh, oh that's, you see, that's my the, the whole family. Here's the whole family. Bird's foot golf course. It's morning, afternoon, so late nice? in the day. Is that your brother? Seems like no, that's that's just one of our one of our. It's my brother like wants a golf world. When we bring people here for the first time, we shoot them with a camera. That's my dad. Is Al? Bird's foot is different. <laughs> it tells a story. How can I do a whole hour on triangulation with you and this did not come up? I don't know. I don't know how it didn't come up. So do, do you have like one brother who's making a movie and another brother who owns a golf course? Amazing. Yes. When you come That's out yeah. interesting. That's a sitcom going, family right there. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I'm telling you, arrested development family. in real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that, so they have the best the best movies. My brother my brother just goes out with a couple cameras and shoots these. Yeah, he shoots this. My My brother, Joe. Oh, Joe, yeah, we, Joe. we've worked with Joe. We've used Joe as a cameraman. Joe's a monster. Is he? He's using a 5D, it looks like here. I mean, I like the bokeh. Uh, yeah, he did He, he did use a 5D for yeah. these. I'm liking the bokeh. I mean, he did a commercial. We used the FS700, so we've got like a slow motion guy hitting a... He did. He had a you know not not many golf courses get a guy to come out and put a FS seven hundred shooting. There's Who's my brother Travis? Trav. That's my brother Trav. <laughs> and I think that's one of the. He is the funniest guy. You know, like there is uh, the funniest guy uh, I know. Who gets to drive that? The my brother Rob actually used to drive it. Okay. Who's family. Michelle? That's my that's my cousin Michelle. She plays the bagpipes. Okay, now, I, now, she plays the bagpipes. She, plays the bagpipes. she plays the bagpipes. she gets out there with a kilt and plays the bagpipes. It's amazing. Serious question. Okay, uh, this is not a joke. Serious question. Yeah. Have you ever pitched or been pitched for a reality show? <laughs> I think we, we have, should do it. We have been pitched for a reality show because there our family go. is crazy. We have great conditions here. <sighs> Our crew takes pride in their wow. work. Wow. Oh, it gets, so yeah. Does she wear a kilt when she plays the yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Come in, and she, she's really good. Sure they're dead on so we can have the perfect <laughs> There's machinery, time. and we yeah, like you know, that. They, they spend a lot of time. There's my brother, Rob, <laughs> running the machinery. <laughs> and it shows through it's on a family course. business. We call him Three I Fingers, Rob. <laughs> wow. That's a nice golf course. Look It's a really nice golf course. It's a pleasure to work with him every day. Nathan leads the charge. Uh, with our maintenance of the golf course. That's as serious as my brother ever gets. This is so cute. You got a whole ad and everything. Yeah. That's, this is the long version, not the commercial yeah, version. Yeah, no kidding. We're gonna, I know, you can cut it off. It's going to go on forever. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area, go to the Bird's Foot Golf Club. Right. But you should sign up for the, for the, uh, for the just, to, just to read my brother's prose. I really want to see a picture of the cannon. Oh, I don't know if they have any yeah. of the cannons. Yeah. You should show that, though. Like, how big? Like, is it a surplus, army surplus cannon? I don't know. It's someone It's someone that my brother knew, of course. And it's just, I don't think, you know, he, I don't think he, I don't know if we actually own the cannon, but I know we bring it out and fire it. And it's a big cannon. I mean, you it's, you can hear it yeah. from my from my parents' house. Wow. And it's miles away. Wow. Yeah. Well, there we go. We've learned something new. There you go. <laughs> 
Just when you thought you knew everything about me, there's I golf. will never learn everything there is to know about Alex Lindsay. That's anyway. for sure. That is layers for upon layers sure. upon layers. I don't know how we got into that. That was a, that, That's an epic. I don't either. Rat hole. <laughs> because because we were talking, oh, we're talking about golf. flappy birds and we're flappy talking birds about and how golf. like golf. And okay, flappy birds. That's right. Let's get back on topic. <laughs> Not that this is anywhere near as interesting as Alex's golf course, but uh, so uh, the guy who created it was, according to The Verge, making, 50, he said he told The Verge $50,000 a day on, it's an ad-supported uh, mm -hmm. program. I, I can vouch for its uh, addictiveness because everybody here plays it. And then I was talking to one of our interns, everybody in the high school like within three days, it downloaded. I mean, it really right. is a viral uh, hit. There's no, there's nobody questioning that. Right. But oddly enough, last week, uh, Dong Nguyen, the author, tweets, "I can't take it anymore. I'm going to pull." Uh, he tweeted this on Saturday. Tomorrow, I'm going to pull the program from both the Android and the App st uh, iOS App Store. That's it. And then, and I, and by the way, it's not for sale. And yes, I still make games. Goodbye. Now, I will say that the the, the question is, is that a whole bunch of people must have downloaded it over the weekend, like me, and I'll eventually get around to selling it, it, it seems like it may increase the amount of money he's actually generating That's by right. all this, you know, and then in, right. in a month it's, he'll say, you know what, people talk me into releasing it again. We don't know how much he sold, uh, how, how many he sold on the uh, App Store, because Apple doesn't give you that information, but, right. on, but on Android, 50 million copies, 50, five, zero million copies, presuming he sold maybe 150 million total, he's going to continue to reap the ad rewards as long as people continue to play that game so he's made a lot of money robert scoble agrees with you he thinks it's a marketing ploy he says in six months watch he'll say it doesn't make any from sense the at creator all. of flappy birds because, because it's crappy birds yeah exactly <laughs> especially with that forbes article that says that one of the reasons why he pulled it was because he did he was he didn't want to be responsible for people becoming to a, uh, addicted yeah. to a game and it really upset him yeah. and that i i do i hope that ter that proves to be true because that's a really n a wonderful altruistic moment m a motive but as soon as that thought completed itself in my head, I realized that, yeah, but you know what? You could have pulled the plug immediately without pre-announcing it if it really was upsetting you that badly. But oh, no, you Andy. basically gave the entire world warning that, you know, that viral mm. hit that everybody's talking about? You will not be able to get it. It goes into the Disney vault along with yes. the Song of the South on Monday. And the real problem is, is that it's too addicting. You know, that's great. That's great marketing. Well, purse. there's also well, some other theories. Uh, one of his, some of his friends uh, told uh, uh, Reuters that he pulled it off because he got a cease and desist from Nintendo. Apparently, he stole the columns directly from Super Mario. Oh, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> maybe Nintendo maybe or maybe not. I don't yeah. know. I mean, uh, and then Nintendo says, well, I, we don't know. Uh, they didn't deny it, but they didn't say they did it either. Um, and then uh, there's, uh, of course, the additional point that when you make a lot of money uh, in Vietnam, and a number of people pointed this out to me, stand back because here comes the government. And in fact, the Forbes guy said our interview was delayed because Dong Nguyen, whoops, <laughs> that's a zero. Dong Nguyen had an interview with the uh, assist, uh, vice prime minister right before, of, of Vietnam, right before, clearly looking for tax revenues. So uh, it may also be he just, uh, he, he wanted it's to run flight. more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, it's a lot of trouble. A lot of money is going to end up in the hands of the Vietnamese government, maybe he just said, you know, I think I might move to Bali. Or, 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 maybe, or maybe it was like, there's a famous story about Whitey Bulger uh, here, in, here in Boston where somebody who was like sort of connected somewhere to him won the lottery, like just won like the, the mega bucks, like a million bucks in the lottery. And guess what? A week later, it turned out that I forgot to say that it was, ac I'm actually in a pool with Whitey Bulger. And so the Ooh. lottery should, should send the money to Whitey instead. Yeah, send it to Whitey. Like, okay. <laughs> so... It's a, I, I, because the the most interesting line from all this is him saying, "This has ruined my life," mm -hmm. and it's like there's so many ways in which that just again put on your smoking jacket, get a, get a sniff of brandy, sit, settle into your leather armchair, lean back, and wonder all the different ways in which. Uh, <laughs> that could Here ruin is somebody's there life. is an excellent uh, aftermarket in uh, phones with Flappy Bird installed on eBay. Here's a uh, iPhone 5, 16 gigs with Flappy Bird. So far, 10 bids, $6,000, but you could shop around because there are a buy it now for an iPhone 5 for $1,000. All I got to say is that, you know, we get paid to work with a lot of ad agencies on viral marketing campaigns. This is brilliant. And none of them none have of them been as this. effective as this. I, I mean, think this you know, is the case. You can't can viral. If you right. could. It wouldn't be viral. It wouldn't be good. No. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be chemical weapon. There's something magical <laughs> that happens that no one really understands why. Right. Boy, a pipe in a dream.
A boy, a pipe, and a dream. Yes. <laughs> at, the, at, at, at the same at the same time, I mean, not not everybody posts something on YouTube with the idea with the goal of becoming a viral sensation. Where it would have it would have made them very very happy if their piano recital or whatever had gotten oh geez like ten thousand people thought this was really really great. But if it's suddenly five million and now they're getting a phone call from the Jimmy Kimmel show and they're getting a phone call from the Today Show, and they're like, this was a I, I thought that maybe 100 people like my friends and their friends would see it. And now this is all everybody's talking about all across the country this weekend. Right. It's that, that has the capability of freaking some people out. It's possible that I, I do. I do think this is in some form a marketing campaign, but it's certainly possible that he was just not prepared to have the viral hit of the entire globe this week. And I kind of prefer that say, story. I, I would much rather... I'd much rather make a comfortable living in yeah. an anonymity than make a fortune as right. the face of this viral hit. Or I've, I've already made a comfortable living. He's, I mean, he's the, easily right. made uh, over a million dollars, and in People Vietnam, are, that goes yeah. a long way. So I'm, I suspect. Well, but, 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 but I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking in general. Like, if you have, there's, there are some people that if you, if you gave them the, the deal with the devil, but let's say a friendly devil that just expects you to make them a, a nice Thanksgiving dinner or something, year, not so damn for all eternity. But I'm saying, yeah, I will give you two. I will offer you two different versions of success. You can either have the sort of success where you will do a line of, of apps that do very, very well and earn you a living of maybe a comfortable living about $130,000, $140,000 a year, but consistent for five years. Or I will give you that exact same amount of income as the viral hit of the planet. You will have one hell of a summer in which you're, there will be T-shirts based on your, your game. There will be Get, there will be sitcom pitches based on your game. Everybody will know who you are and everything you went through to produce this game. There are a lot of people who would much rather say, I will take half that money if no one, if, if, if I get to have the anonymity of no one knowing who the hell I am. Interesting story on Bloomberg Business Week. The iPhone is a new international currency. Uh, Vernon Silver uh, said, I, uh, during a business trip, I live in Rome where domestic work is cheap, technology is expensive. Uh, one worker uh, who was, uh, you know, I guess doing his laundry or I don't know, um, heard he was going to the States. She said, pick me up an iPhone and that I'll take that instead of cash for the month's work. So he went to the Apple store on Fifth Avenue. Lining up, he says, I was surrounded by shoppers speaking languages from around the world. The salesman looked stunned when I said I wanted just one unlocked iPhone. <laughs> he said, we just got a shipment. We got the gold model. He says it's the most popular in Europe, the easiest to resell. To my right, a man with a credit card from a Saudi bank was trying to buy his third and fourth phones of the day. So Silver says, make it two. <laughs> <laughs> there was one more step. The salesman grabbed a landline from behind the counter to connect me with my bank's anti-fraud department. He says purchases from the store are red flags to the credit card <laughs> companies. So apparently this has become a currency the iPhone is a currency. The priciest country, Brazil, an iPhone is worth $1,196. Jordan, Turkey, Romania, Greece, and Hungary, all worth more than $1,000. I, I have to admit, I, I've often thought about it. I'm just, I just don't have the time or I'm just too lazy. But well, I go so in and out of Africa all the time. And especially when something has just been released, I get a lot of emails from f folks like, hey, you know, I'll pay you 50% more than yes. you paid for your yes. iPad or iPhone or whatever. And it's been clear that if I brought in 10 iPads, I could definitely pay for my entire trip. It's called iPhone yeah. arbitrage. Kyle Weens yeah. of iFixit, we've talked to him many times, said he was uh, in Cabo and the dive leader offered free boat trips if Weens ever returned to Mexico with iPhones, at, not for free, to sell at the U.S. price, the price that Kyle paid for it right. because there's such a markup in uh, Mexico. iPhone arbitrage. Just thought I'd gold. pass it along. If you're planning to travel, you might want to pick up a couple of gold <laughs> iPhones before there you, you go. go. There you go. Just pack we, them in You there. know what? It, actually, it's interesting. This is a long-standing tradition. When uh, I first went to Eastern Europe in the 60s, Levi's blue jeans. Right. Yeah. Worth, tapes. worth money. Big Beatles money. Records, I, have a lot of art, I have a lot of artwork um, in our office that I traded uh, logoed shirts for. Yeah. In, in Africa, when because we were in Egypt, and they didn't and want the money. I said, "I'll pay you cash," and they're like, "No, no, we no, want no, the, we got the shirts." Shirt. You know, because I can get the cash anywhere. I can't get that shirt. Right. You know, when we were in Egypt, we were told in 2010, I 2009, our guide said, "Next time you come back, bring a lot of ballpoint pens. We can't get them, and the kids love them." I, I take whole packs to Zimbabwe. Yeah, and you hand them out because right, yeah. they're cheap, big pens, cheap. Yep. And they prefer that to money. I keep on meaning to like when I go there. I, I keep on meaning to get Pixel Core one, so they always remember me. Like I, like twenty years <laughs> later, they'll remember the Pixel Core. Pixel I handed out two thousand. There'll be a cargo cult twenty years from now worshiping <laughs> the Pixel Core. <laughs>
Oh, the great god of Pixacor came to our land and gave us pens. Uh, by the way, Bitcoin, real quick, and then we're going to get to our picks of the week. Bitcoin, uh, two things. One, Apple has killed the most popular Bitcoin wallet app in the App Store. Apple really mm -hmm. doesn't like Bitcoin. Doesn't like it. He wants no part of it right now. We want no part of it. And there is a Trojan you should watch out for, for OS 10 that targets your Bitcoin wallet. So watch out. Our uh, show today, brought. we're going to get to our picks of the week in just a second. Our show today brought to you by 99designs. That's my pick this week. 99designs.com. We're having a little, uh, we're going to, uh, we've used them before. If this is a place to go where you need, if you need designs, if you need graphic designs for uh, landing pages, websites, e you know, even like email templates, T-shirts, that's what we use it for, uh, car wraps, whatever, uh, apps. You know, if you've, you've got the next Flappy Bird, you can write a program like nobody's business, but do you have the design sense? 99designs has the designers. 280,000 designers are waiting for you to go and pitch them. Uh, they call it a contest where you say, here's what I need. We just did one uh, for our new hoodie, and we've got five designs. We actually like the design so much, we bought fi at least five of them. we got so many great designs. And uh, you can vote uh, if you would like. In fact, let me, let me um, if you go to our blog, insidetwit.tv, uh, it's it's scrolled down. There it is. Uh, there's there's uh, links to the four designs. There's uh, design uh, A, which is a beautiful four color design. Uh, then there's the uh, next design. You want to show them all? There's that's the vertical design. Design C. Remember these letters because we're gonna have you vote. Design E is stylized. These all came from 99 Designs designers. I love these. We we actually couldn't choose. Design B is the graffiti design, which I really like. Design D is the steampunk. A lot of people really like this one, too. So these will go on a hoodie that we will sell. You can cast your vote uh, on our uh, straw poll at strawpoll.me slash 1079823. Wow, he's gotten into the millions now of straw polls. Strawpoll.me slash 1079823. Or just go to inside.twit.tv. Actually, you need to because you want to see the the uh, designs before you vote because we don't have the pictures in the straw poll. Um, I just love it. I just love it. 99designs.com. You connect to the great graphic designers. Right now, there are 2,390 open contests. So you create a contest. You say, I need, you know, a T-shirt or a logo or whatever. Um, they have paid out. Last month, they paid over $2 million to designers. $68 million total. It's a really great idea for a company. 99designs.com. Start your next graphic design project for as low as $199. And by the way, go to 99designs.com slash MBW to get a power pack of services for free. The power pack gives you more designer time and attention. Bold highlighting and featuring your design project in their marketplace. You'll get nearly twice as many designs. 99designs.com slash MBW. We thank them so much for their support and their, teach and their uh, hoodie designs. I can't wait to see which one wins. Yeah, the straw poll seems to be down. I think we kill it every time we do this. Uh, let's get our picks of the week. If we can do them fairly quickly, that would be nice. Andy and Akko, we shall start with you. Uh, real quick, because this is, I, I'm not sure if I've actually recommended this one before. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Mac Tubes, which is my favorite YouTube downloader for Mac. Uh, I was just this morning, ah, I can't drag the window in, but uh, so, so John Syracuse posted a video to this lightning fast F1 Ferrari tire change pit stop. Uh, and it was so fast, I really wanted to look at it in greater detail, but it was going too fast. So Mac tubes can pretty much get any. Uh, ah, ah, sorry, I've screwed up my screwed up my my, my monitor setup. But the idea is that you just uh, get the URL from the top of the address bar, uh, plug it into Mac tubes. It will let you either watch the video or via a little pop up in the corner of the screen, it will show you all the different video files that are hosted on vid on YouTube. Excuse me, the the, the actual source video files and let you download the HD version, the SD version of it if you want the the, the really awful open source uh, compressed version will let you get that. The idea though that now you can have a now it's a, a QuickTime file that's on your desktop that you can then watch. 
Uh, and then there, there are lots of there's, lots, there's also lots of stuff on YouTube that are like 1970s TV shows that are technically not out of copyright, but nobody is claiming them. And so if you're going to if you're going to if you if you're going to be able to watch this old like Tony Randall TV show of which there were four episodes, this is your only opportunity to do it, which is to watch it on YouTube. And you can also download it in case it goes away later on. Uh, so uh, I use it all the time for stuff like that. And also, again, I really need a super slow mo through a Ferrari pit change. Uh, it's free. Uh, it's an open, I believe it's a, uh, a, a Creative Commons or open source uh, project, or at least a lot of the sources of it are uh, common, uh, common or, uh, or open source. Uh, I've been using it for years. It's a very, very quiet little app, but it works great. Very nice. Free, free, free. Mac tubes. Always good to have some way to get those videos. Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. Oops, you're muted, dude. Unmute. Sorry, my, my, my pick of the week is Threes. Uh, you might not like me for recommending it because I can't stop playing it. I've been losing sleep over it, but it's a load of fun. I play this in lieu of um, Floppy Bird. Uh, much so better, it, much more satisfying than Floppy Birds. <laughs> absolutely. So basically yeah. the red and the blue numbers you can combine together. So two and one makes three. Then you can combine any pair. So for example, there's two 12s there. I can combine those. I can combine two threes. And you want to basically you want to get the highest number you can every time you combine something its value goes up uh it's a lot of fun i wouldn't say it's a math game some people call it a math game but you're really just adding some matching numbers. game with it's numbers. a matching game yeah absolutely uh you play it it's again you have one chance as soon as you run out of as soon as the screen is full and you can no longer match any tiles the game is over i've gotten to about nine thousand. some people in my game circuit in my game center queue are at like twenty seven thousand, something like that it's quick so you can get in and out it's incredibly fun it's addictive in the right way uh not you know it's not maddening it's actually enjoyable uh and it, it filled that flappy bird hole in my heart <laughs> it is the greatest game ever brian brushwood showed it to me on twitter i recommended it yesterday and i've had today it is very addictive and very hard to uh, stop and the best thing about it there's no in-app purchases there's no in-app ads they just ask you for a small amount of money up front and then just let you play what are you showing there chad Please this save the, and embed wherever you want. Yeah, this That's is a show. three. They, 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 this is a new viral way of, of sharing stuff. It's a GIF that just plays over and over again. So I've been seeing this on Google Plus, oh, on it's Twitter. An it's in effect an ad. It's in fact an ad for, ah. for threes. It's on their website. And it's just a GIF, so they could throw it Very absolutely clever. anywhere. Very clever. Um, and it sh kind of shows how it works and, and everything. This yeah. is the thinking person's Flappy Bird. Yes. And it is spreading just about as fast. Is something about it that's really satisfying. And I hope more developers take up this model because it shows you can't have a successful game without doing, you know, incredibly. It's not awesome. freemium. It's a buck ninety nine, and that's yeah. it. No in app purchases. And boy, gosh, uh, I pray this is a success. <laughs> Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week looks like a cable. I, I got a cable. It turns out, I think Thunderbolt is the future. No. no, no. <laughs> so I, I, I hesitated to to recommend anything in this area for a while, or or, or because I really wanted to test a lot of the stuff. So we. One of the hardest things to do with what we do with live streaming, hangouts, and so on and so forth, um, is getting regular video, so cameras, you know, your HDMI camera or your SDI camera or your switcher into Wirecast or Hangouts or Skype or whatever. Um, and we have a lot of different interfaces, uh, and we have kind of decided that this is not the only one we use, but definitely the one we're using now the most, which is the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. I hold it in my hands now, Mr. Chad, so you can show the world. So this is about $150. It's tiny. -see. It's tiny. It's uh, You just have a Thunderbolt. So you need a Thunderbolt uh, computer, but you can take SDI or HDMI. You plug the Thunderbolt so in. It's this, powered by the bus. This comes from the computer, like my Mac Pro, let's yep. say. And you plug is it, it in. Is it the video interface, the Apple video interface? And it does. That'll that'll. I thought they had to reverse engineer this, you know? Yeah, there's the box for it. Um, yeah. So the... Uh, so it is, um, it's a Thunderbolt to, and it's SDI to HD and, and, and HDMI or, and, or HDMI to Thunderbolt. So the, um, so it, it's basically just a very inexpensive way for you to get either your switcher output or your camera output, whether it's a H, little HDMI camera or a, um, or an SDI camera or SDI feed, um, into your computer. And so, so you would hook, okay. Oh, uh, into your computer. So that's what that way you want to get your video camera. Let's say your your G10, like these little cameras that oh, you're using. Oh, it comes here. this way. Yeah, it goes in. It goes then, this way. Yeah, exactly. So it goes in the SDI or HDMI port and out the Thunderbolt port and into, into your, your computer. So that whether and this will just show up on your Hangouts on Skype. Do we use these, John? We tried it for Tom. Ah. 
he says we tried it for Tom. Past, uh, compatibility with Skype. Oh, Skype doesn't like. It's a lot of black magic stuff Skype doesn't see for some reason. We haven't figured that out. Why? Well, to play with, we don't do Skype very much. We're mostly yeah. doing Hangouts. That's yeah. our company. Works with so, Hangouts, though. Works great with Web Hangouts. WebRTC and all that. Yeah, and and, um, and so, uh, and we use two different ones. We use the AJA IOXT. Uh, the reason we like the AJA IOXT is because AJA has a great um, uh, interface that lets us know what the video pipe is, and that's not, not what you get with this, but this is one-tenth the, the price. So, yeah. so, so, you know, so we have, uh, so we use both of those. Most kits will have one, one or the other, and we'll use this, but if we're having any trouble, we'll put the IOXT in, but the IOXT is bigger and some more sensitive and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, so anyway, um, that's the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, but if you're trying to get started and you want something inexpensive to get your, um, your video in for live streaming, uh, this is a great solution. So, you know, have you seen, uh, thank you, that is from Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. How much? Uh, 145. 145. <laughs> and uh, I was just going to ask you about this. Uber conference has been getting a lot of press lately. We just this started is, testing it. This is WebRTC. In other words, it's Google Hangout compatible. Conferencing. Uh, well. Or not. I haven't, I haven't done, I haven't used the Uber conference from the, from the video I've been using the phone version. It now, does support I, I phone calls in. Uber Conference, um, the uh, the Uber Conference phone is just awesome. And they have these, what's really cool is they, they have the funniest uh, song. You know, it's I'm waiting on the conference call. You know, like and it, the, the, that they use that we enjoy. There's no uh, pin, which drives me crazy. I hate pins. So, by the way, I... I, I do too, because you always... I'm on. You get the number, then you got to go. Oh, and then what's the pin? Well, and the problem is you can't just click on something and get there. And and I I'm on probably five or six conference calls so a day. So you get a phone number. So it's you a call in. So Uber conference works great. Um, they now have integration with Hangouts, so you can have, you can have um, people in a Hangout, but then one of the people can be a phone call to Uber conference, and then you could be integrating. So it's not doing video then. Not that I know of. Okay. It but it but, but it, 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 it uses Hangouts as the back end. Well, you can now integrate it with Hangouts. Oh, Uber Conference works on its own as well. So Uber right. Conference can just go there. And I have the pro plan, so I can have 100 Which people is 10 call. 10 bucks a month. Like 10 bucks a month. It's nothing. And there, so it's, There's a free plan that is actually does a lot of... The free plan does 10, yeah. 10 people. So for most people, yeah. that's fine. We do a lot of things that require a lot of people. I wanted to ask you about this. Um, okay. Yeah, so I like... I, a lot of press we later. have... Um, so we, we're, we're experimenting with this mostly because it integrates with Hangouts, and we're always looking at anything that touches Hangouts we pay a lot of attention to. Um, we have like six pro accounts with GoToMeeting, so, and then we also use um, Team uh, Speak. Um, and so, but, but for, this is one of the easiest ones, and because it ties into Hangouts, it's a great solution. So I just wanted to mention that Congregate, if you didn't get to play Flappy Bird at all, Congregate with a K has a Flappy, Flash Flappy, uh, that you can play. And oh, wait a minute. Was it exactly the same? It's exactly the same. That's funny. There's a uh, ton of clones, too. Yeah, well, there's a lot of clones, but I mean, this is exactly the same. It's like Flappy Bird Online. I don't know. Actually, there's a ton of them on Flappy Bird. I mean, on Congregate, there's more than one. So that's weird. But I was just playing it. I don't know what happened. Oh, I have to watch an ad. That's why. Anyway, if you, if you really say, what was this all about? I wouldn't if I were you. If you're part of a high school history class in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's one Flappy Bird died I.O. That's good. Thank you, chat room. This is from uh, uh, SJFN6. Oh, there it is. Forget congregate. Just do Flappy Bird died I.O. That's, that's pretty much the same, isn't it? Is it getting any... Are you getting any sound? No. Oh. Are you that, getting angry? Be, that made me be my, my, uh, my machine. And I guess they pay for it with that little Amazon ad in there right there. That's Max McDonald. Oh, okay, <laughs> enough of that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. Thank you to Andy Yanako at the Chicago Sun-Times, my friend. Great to see you again and your little Always robot sucks. dentist friend. We thank Andy uh, for being here. We thank Alex Lindsay for uh, joining us with his golf club and cannon. <laughs> I want video of the cannon. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll get some video on the cannon. <laughs> Pixelcore.com. When are you, soon? It's this month. This month. This month. You'll be able By to end of the month. start up again. We'll so be opening it back up so people can, yep. And uh, the Exquisite Corpse. And <laughs> Mr. Renee Ritchie of imore.com. And a little tip of the hat to crackberry.com for the use of the, of the facilities. Facilities <laughs> of the hall. Uh, apparently, squishybird.com says F and Done is even better. All right, all right, wait a minute. Uh, we do this. We do this. Gore. <laughs> we do this show every, t every uh, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Oh, Squishy Bird. It's full screen. Oh, uh, this is, but watch out because if oh. you don't. Oh no. Oh!
Oh. Am I trying oh, to get squished? Combat. You're you're the the thing. You're the thing oh. opposing. Oh, they reversed it. They've, they've 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 turned the tables. Yeah. Like angry pigs. Right. <laughs> we do the show 11 a.m. Pacific every Tuesday. That's uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 1900 UTC on Twit.tv. Please tune in live. That way you can feed us things like Squishy Bird. But if you can't make it here live, we always have on-demand audio and video available after the fact. Twit.tv slash MBW or wherever you subscribe to finer netcasts like iTunes. That'd be a good place to start. Do subscribe. you get it every week. Thanks for joining us. But now I'm afraid it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Break time is over.